That's right, baby. We are back. And we are back on a Saturday afternoon slash evening, wherever you're at. Happy that you're with us. It's Saturday Day Live. My name is Jonathan from Hedgehog Action. I'm back again with my good friend, Ryan Gonzalez. Rhino, what's going on, man? Nothing. What a wonderful time to be alive. Also, I'm happy you got rid of some of those awful pictures of me with my eyes closed in most of them in the intro. Oh, it's not over yet, man. We're going to keep adding. Keep adding to the intro. Uh, I had to change it because I had the I used the thumbnail from the return episode, so that had to change. Uh, that is, of God, course, yeah. original music co-produced by me. Uh, System oh, Failure nice. is the name of the song. Uh, Glitch Matrix is the name of the group. But <clears throat> we are back Saturday. We're here to talk some toys, talk some nerdy stuff. We got a lot going on. A big topic of discussion for today is going to be the AWOC Kickstarter, which is down to its final days. Three days to go. It's been a smashing success. And we have a couple of very special guests that we're going to bring on in just a minute to talk about that stuff. Rhino, I know you're an AWOC guy, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm backed. I'm all in. Not the epic all in. I can only afford an all in. <laughs> uh, listen, I got to be honest with you. I'm in on the 170 level right now, but uh, we'll see. I mean, we're going to have a conversation with some guys in a few minutes. Probably going to change some minds to up some pledges. Uh, all right, I'm going to do the chat thing. We got a bunch of really awesome people in the chat already. And again, we need to say thank you to everybody who's in the chat already. Anybody that joins us from here to the end of the stream uh, and anybody that checks us out on the replay, we can't tell you how much we appreciate you spending just some of your Saturday or whenever you join with us. <clears throat> some of those people today so far are Kirby Smith, Dave, or here we go. Kirby Smith, Kirby. Dave Orkin. Of course, what Amber Gonzalez, also part of the SDS that crew. <laughs> mm -mm. That's the uh, that's the um, <laughs> uh, that's the uh, the intern, right? They're, that's going on right now. Amber for a day. Amber for a day. <clears throat> Wholesome Warlock. Oh, Jordan man. is in the house. Purple Gang Gang. Mythic Dolphin in the house. What up, Rob Zamora? What's up, my friend? Curtis Ackerman. Wow, he never shows up to live streams. That's crazy. <laughs> He'll be on here before long. What up, Bill, Bill? from the door, Claire? The Godfather is in the house. Me, I'm in the house. Look at me. Let's go. Andy, the collector. Tanya's in the house. Great hey, Legion's Tanya. Lady stream on a Thursday night. <clears throat> Jesse, Jesse, just Shelvet is in the house. Joe Gonzalez. Ish holding it down in North Ish. Carolina. Rick Jones. Uh, Spiro Studio in the house. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? Uh, bu, 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 bu. a lot of people. I think I got most of the people here. Jeff Evans in the house, Kevin McCoy in the house, Gregory Schmerbenberger, Burger, 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 our good buddy. He's got a new show, Cosmic Connections. Check that out. Purple Gang Gang, BGG. Brick something in the house. Eric Munoz, oh, thank you so much, guys. We can't wait. We're happy to be here to talk to you. And uh, without further ado, we got a lot going on here. So let's bring in a couple of our very special guests that we are very honored and excited to have chilling out and hanging out with us. Starting off, our good friend, Brick something. What's going on, man? Hi, folks. Happy to be here. Happy to be here for Saturday Day Live. Yeah, man. Listen, uh, it's been too long. Happy to have you on, man. I'm a big fan of yours uh, and happy to talk to you on a Saturday. Hell You've yeah. been working, friend, recently. Last few weeks has been a time for you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've 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 been going hard on to this whole gather the tribe kind of little promo tour that we're trying to do to let people know about one the Kickstarter and two the Animal Warriors of the Kingdom Kickstarter that is, and just the brand in in general. Like I'm finding that um yeah man just not enough people are aware that the brand exists or what it's about and um you know and how great these toys are. So that was that was something I just wanted to help out with this Kickstarter and just make sure folks know. 
Well, you've been doing a great job of it, man. I've caught you on mm-hmm. uh, streams here. You did a great one with uh, Dork Lair a while back. I caught Jason on with uh, Wade, Unparalleled Universe. Jason yep. was on with you for the mm-hmm. Needless Camera we saw a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so many more. Uh, and more to come in this last uh, home stretch, man. So I feel like as far as getting the word out, you guys could not be working harder. Thanks, man. Yeah, that that was the goal. That was the goal. So, uh, well, actually, there's other goals, too. But we needed to, you know, make sure that we used our agency and our power to, to do what we can to, to get the word out. So here we go. I hope everything's OK. Uh, yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. Highly articulated, man. Definitely hope everything's okay. Prayers up for you, of course. Um, so, um, but we will carry on to the extent we can provide any levity uh, while you're waiting for anything. That's what we'll we'll try to to try to do for you here, man. Um, and try to just bring some smiles to anybody who needs it. If you're having a great day, a bad day, a horrible day, we're here to try to bring you a little bit of smile. Um, and part of that is going to be talking a walk, man. Uh, we got some other things to talk about too that we'll get into a little bit later. That mythic mystery behind me, we'll talk about that later on. Uh, yeah. Uh, but first of all, since we're talking a walk, we got Brick on the man himself. I feel like we got to also bring on somebody else. Jason. Well, hello, hello boys. That's the head oh, animal right there. <laughs> I What's just noticed Brick on, didn't have his glasses on. Oh, just hanging out, making <laughs> awesome action figures. How y'all so, doing? Uh, no, nothing going on for you recently, right? Not a busy time no, for you. Just nothing happening. Just kind of sitting on my lawn chair, having mimosas, you know. I don't know All if right. I've ever actually had a mimosa. <laughs> <laughs> I have. That's nothing up right home about, unless you're a big right? orange juice guy, I think. Yeah. Or you really like drinking in the morning. So, or you're like a 45 year old white woman. (laughs) I'm most of those. I'm, I'm 50%, 40%, not good with percents. I'm some of that. Oh, well, I'm 46. But, um, but yeah, Jason, seriously, man, uh, real quick, we're going to get into some more of the nuts and bolts. We're going to, you know, get into the the Kickstarter at a granular level, especially for, you know, a lot of people that are going to be watching the stream are very familiar. There's probably a lot of backers there too, but there's probably a few people that are only superficially aware. So we're going to dig into some of that, but I want to step back a little bit. Um, for those that don't know, the AWOC Kickstarter is going on right now. Uh, the second wave of the, uh, one twelfth scale AWOC figures. And the it's it's met already. Its minimum funding goal has gone over that by a couple of times, and there's a couple of days left. So, right. Jason, can you just give us a, a, a an insight as to what you're feeling right now? What's that feel like? Where you know the Kickstarter is successful, but there's still a couple of days left. There's still some stretch goals that you can hit. What's going through your mind right now? Um, you know, first of all, I want to I want to thank Brick because he's done an amazing job just scheduling all these shows that we've been on. Uh, where is that the right way? I have this mirrored. Other so side, I don't know. other side. Okay, other here we go. Side. There you go. <laughs> I just scared the cat. Um, yeah, we. It feels like we. So we just got out of the marathon section of the Kickstarter. We're going into the last couple of days. Um, we we. It's been so fun, and it's kind of like when you have your toddler who's like just running around like crazy, and they don't realize that they're tired. You know, I feel like we're at that stage right now where we've just been kind of going like full, f- full throttle and we're, we're a little tired, but we're our, our uh, excitement hasn't let up at all. And, and we are just so ready to unlock these additional kicks, uh, these additional stretch goals. It's going to be super exciting the next couple of days. Um, and for anyone who hasn't heard of the line or isn't necessarily fulfill, f- familiar with it, uh, you know, our. Our signature is having like super articulated, fun action figures. Uh, the AWOC is our our flagship IP right now. We're, we're working on several others, but this is what we're kind of really focusing on right now. Um, and Adam kind of coined the term hand candy. So like you kind of pick them up and you just can't help but like pose them. And they're so, they just really lend themselves to posing really well. Uh, one of the things that we're doing on, on this go around is uh, offering weapon sets that are like, almost they're like almost completely unique in their you know on their own 
They're not going to be included with other figures. And what's so cool about that is, you know, they're great for AWOC, but they'll go great with Mythic. There's some stuff I think will go with Cosmic. Uh, if you're like Masterverse collector, sword and sorcery type stuff, it goes. It'll go with all, all of that. It's got a little bit of something for everyone as far as like the weapon stuff goes. Uh, and if you're an anthropomorphic fan, we really think you'll love this stuff. So, uh, yeah, go check out the Kickstarter. There's rewards that are essentially kind of set up to every type of collector. Uh, we think that the All In is probably your best bet if you're already a fan. Uh, we've also got some really great sample packs where it's like two figures in a weapon set that's almost it's almost free it's like steeply discounted the weapon is what I'm, I'm referring to but yeah that if you do that all in which is i think it's about 350 you get all the stuff that was uh, offered at the beginning of the kickstarter um and what you can do is if you know there's a character that got unlocked later on, you can substitute that stuff. So don't think just because something got unlocked, you can't swap out figures. Uh, and if you're really like just through the roof for, for AWOC, you can do the Epic All-In, which essentially gives guarantees you like one of everything that's unlocked throughout the campaign. Uh, and, and I did mention before that, you know, if for some reason, uh, you know, we don't unlock uh, General Mamba right at the very end. We're gonna like roll over the uh, the rewards or the back the funding that we get from backer kit uh, to go towards him. So there's you know it, don't panic if it doesn't unlock at the last second. Uh, and what a lot of people are actually doing is backing the eighty nine dollars. They're just adding it to their pledge, don't so that way yeah. for some reason it unlocks during the middle of the night or something. They don't have to worry about you know waking up and adding that to their pledge level to make sure that they get the the discounted uh, price for that figure. So there it is. So it's been a great stream, you guys. Uh, yeah, it was great. Thank you so much for stopping by. Good night, folks. Dude, talk about a professional that has it down. Uh, listen, it, you know, I, you don't need me to tell you that the response to this has been absolutely overwhelmingly positive. You know, it's wild. Um, Carlos says AWOX is one of the most quality action figures in the market hey. right now. I agree. What's up, my brother? Love you, dude. Bill brings up a good uh, point here. TMNT vibes too. A walk is and a cool line too because I would has, just love that. Like it goes with mythic. Like it, there's definitely some mythic yeah. stuff going on there, but it's right. also got that colorful, happy, fun, vibrant right. vibe that goes with TMNT. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. You know, Derek always says we're we're building a brand. It's not just the action figures. We've got the we've got the comic book that's in comic stores now. Um, then we've got the toys, and then obviously we would love to do a cartoon at some point. And that way, you know, we feel like once we do the cartoon, at that point, we start to kind of reach that that uh, critical mass where it's it's almost like a, a household name type of thing. And and I do realize that that's ambitious, but that's kind of who I am. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I like to swing for the fences, and uh, everything seems like it's going according to plan. Uh, or, or should I say the way uh, Emperor Palpatine says? Uh, Everything is proceeding as I have foreseen. Yeah, foreseen. <laughs> In a good way, though. Absolutely, absolutely. So, all right, let's uh, <clears throat> let's hop into it here. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a hey, little bit of a slideshow here and get into so, some more of the granular detail here. Um, first, to get some stuff out of the way here. Oh, those cool graphics. Quick yeah. announcements. Listen, I do that Bruh. to cover up uh, my shortcomings in actually leading the conversation. So let's look <laughs> at these pretty pictures. Don't worry about what I'm saying. Uh, first, uh, real quick, a couple of announcements. First of all, look at that. Amber for a day. Cool. Amber for a day. Uh, the lottery has now closed. So it closed on Thursday. So that's the intern for a day program. Uh, with Four Horsemen Studios, where you can go and you have this incredible day. We've talked about a bunch in the past. It's just a great experience. Uh, we call it Amber for a day because Amber Gonzalez wins every year. Uh, <laughs> we got Brian Brink in the house. What's up, Brian? What's up, Brian? We're going to get to you, too, in a few minutes, Brian. Um, but it closed on Thursday. I just bring that up. That must mean that e emails will be going out soon, I assume. I have not been told this, but I assume emails to those that won the lottery for intern for a day should be going out soon. Amber for a That's day. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, also, the Pop and Swap Stars contest for Legion's Lounge is currently ongoing. It goes from now until uh, April 26th in the Mythic Legion's Cabal. 
Uh, that is the contest where you have up to three Mythic Legions or Cosmic Legions or Figure Obscura figures pop and swap and make your own Lazy Boy custom out That's of cool. those parts only. And That's there are cool. a number of really great prizes you can win. Go to the Cabal. There is a featured post uh, in the Mythic Legions Cabal. If you want to check out all the rules, check out all the updated information for prizes. There's a lot of great prizes that are being donated and put up for the um, for the contest. Multiple categories, including Purple Gang Gang, who will be going on live 9 o'clock. Also, I believe, talking some AWOC. They have their own purple category. So a lot of cool That's stuff. Cool. It's a dude. It's a really cool contest. Uh, the Legion's Lounge guys. So uh, Trevor, um, mm -hmm. yep. Bill from the Dork Layer, and uh, Nate Strong run that contest. They've done it the last couple of years. It's awesome. And since we're talking about it right now, can I bring on one more very special guest with us here? Bill from the hey, Dork Layer. Hey, Bill. What's up, What's dude? Up, dude? How's it going, man? Going good. How's it going? It's going awesome, dude. I have an announcement to make. <clears throat> Ooh. Do it. I am I am quitting the Legion's Lounge and I am entering the Pop and Swap Stars contest. Let's go. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, uh, nice. I was gonna say that that, that feels Mama. incredibly unfair and intimidating. <laughs> yeah, really. I want to. I want to. Shortly, shortly after the contest, Bill may re-enter the Legion's Lounge. That's right. Yeah. Out there. I do need to get on it and do some just, you know, just some pop and swaps just to kind of promote it and stuff. But I love this. I love this contest. I love this. Time we met, oh, man, it's, it's awesome. so cool. <clears throat> if we have time near the end of the stream, I might want to go in and search out some of the entries so far because I've loved some and I want to do There's a lot of stuff to get to, so I don't want to do it yet. But I know yeah. there was one in particular that used, um, I think, some of the wizard cloaks. Uh, from the Poxis wave, and it just had this really crazy figure where, like, the face was kind of covered. And, like, there's already been some really great entries. And oh, yeah. the problem is I now, feel, like, yeah, I ahead. feel like the Bob Marley's like the Bob Marley. God, <laughs> help me out, Bob Cratchit. I feel like that one's gonna have, uh, like a lot Marley. of like really good entries for those parts. I oh yeah, like uh, Jacob, Marley. Jacob Marley. Jacob Marley. Jacob yeah, Marley. Yeah, yeah. You mashed up Bob Cratchit. <laughs> the guy. Marley. Yeah, you the did. Thing with the P I'm horrible with names, so brilliant. Somebody's got to make at. the Bob Cratchit now. I've never I even know, made that connection, actually. Bob yeah. Cratchit, Marley. Yeah. Jacob. <clears throat> <laughs> My brain's so gone. Swap stars. That goes until April 26th, but uh, hop on it. Get your entries in now because. Yes. Um, you know, all the good spots are getting taken up. Uh, and the more entries that are out there, you got to be more creative to differentiate yourself, boys and girls. Uh, <laughs> Rick Jones says, I take a I take a Bob Marley Euro Obscura. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. free. You could that's a sure. free thing. Take it. Go I mean, he, it. he is a legend. Oh, sorry. That's true. Yeah. No, sorry. <laughs> um, also, real quick, uh, announcement or a uh, little bit of a uh, pub here for the Lehigh Valley toy show, which is coming up. That's in Pennsylvania, Easton, Pennsylvania on May 4th. Uh, it's going to be a four horsemen studio street team event, uh, which Wolf King customs and Len LaGuardia will be in charge of. Len will be there with the Wolf King crew. Uh, Jesse, the flannel ninja himself will be manning the Wolf King table while Len taking care of the street team Four Horsemen studio stuff. I will be running around causing trouble live streaming from the show, but it's supposed to be a really cool toy show. We'll be talking about it a lot in the coming weeks. I'm very excited. It's the first time there's been a Four Horsemen presence at this show, which is mm. fairly local to me, about a half an hour yes. away. So may nice. the fourth, may the fourth be with you, Lehigh Valley Toy Show. Uh, I think we might even do a stream just special for this show. So if you're anywhere in the Northeast or will be uh, in the fourth, uh, roll out. Van Johnson says, shout out to the Flannel Gang Gang. Anyone going to see the Phantom Menace on May the 4th? I got my tickets for that. I will not. Um, I don't know yet. It, it depends. I will not. Like I did that one. I saw Phantom Menace <laughs> twice in the movies when it first came out. 
Uh, you know, I probably I won't so, be going back. I felt so guilty whenever I when it came out because I watched it like I watched it twice, and the first time I watched it, it was in this giant movie theater, but the screen wasn't big enough, so it was almost like the equivalent oh of like watching it on an iPhone. <clears throat> right. uh, and then I watched <laughs> it again, and I was like, not feeling it. And then I watched it a third time, and I remember like getting in the car and like sitting in the car and be like, "Man, what's the deal? It's Star Wars, but I don't like it." You know? Uh, <laughs> of course, I was like, I, I, w- I think I was nineteen at the time, and I was kind of like a jaded teenager, you know, that that like ev- yeah. nothing's cool anymore. And I think the Matrix had just come out, so I was like more interested in stuff like that. <clears throat> yeah, Matrix, yeah, Fight yeah. Club. I, uh, I, I have come to enjoy the movie over the years, uh, but it's not something that I think I would like go sit in the theater for, if that makes sense. Mm-hmm. It's a listen to me. The way I look at it is I did not enjoy the movie. It's not one of my favorite Star Wars movies taking them yeah. all into account, but right. it's part of Star Wars history now. Like, right. It is, yeah. you know what I mean? It's it's, and now it's, and the funny thing is it's weird to think about it as being like an older movie sort of, but it, it is. is. I know it I, kills me. It's like, no way that that can't be 25, 25 years, years old. What are you talking about? Crazy. I did go see. I took my son to go see Return of the Jedi. Oh, last I would year go see that. they put it. In I saw that school. last yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. That's my jam. Um, That's my it, favorite Star Wars movie. I am like I had to close anytime my, like, any any Star Wars movie gets put back in the theaters, I, I have to go see it. I, I really want to see. I want another. I forget what year it was. Twenty, maybe it was a ten year anniversary of the Lord of the Rings. But I, I oh they, dude, they I would did, totally. They did the extended editions. Um, they did them like, a week. like it was like a Wednesday and then like the following Wednesday and then like the following That's Wednesday cool. afternoon movies. Yeah. And it was like, it was the best. It was years later, you know, it was probably the 10th and I would love it if they did that again. I would be all I would, over that. I would be down. I know it's, un- it's not as popular, but I actually like the Hobbit trilogy just as much as the, the original Lord of the Ring trilogy. I watched the just Hobbit every much. night to go to sleep. You know, it's like the, the beginning's like very comforting. But uh, yeah, I've seen every movie in the theaters, all the movies. Uh, the Return of the King, I actually watched like this because I was in the front row, like on the very uh, end, and I was yeah, like, worse, I was worse. just like, everything was like really distorted, and I was like, three hours of this, I don't know if I can handle this. So I did that with Harry Potter with uh, when Deathly nice. for one of the Deathly Hallows movies. I was like, oh my god. Well, when Lord but of the Rings like, first killed. came out, it was like. You know, so what was it, 2000? And then uh, the first one came out in 2001, I think. Oh, one. Okay. So, so 2001, yeah. right? And then, um, and then right before the next one would come out the following year, they would redo, they would have the previous one on the big screen as the extended edition, right? So, I don't yeah, know if you guys remember I didn't that. know that. That, that was, I, I mean, I, I watched them so many times in the movies because Same. of that. That's yep. awesome. Same. <laughs> I mean, you know what my dream is, though. My dream is because I'm old, is do the original trilogy, but original theatrical release. Somebody oh, at Disney, I, I, you must it. be able to do it. Give me original theatrical release. I've got copies yep. of the original theatrical release. Those Same. Yep. are three of my top five favorite movies of all time. Like right? the original, right. original, like, or like the D D specialized editions. Like a, I want, give me the give me the I'm actually don't know too much about the THX. Here, here's um, the yes, thing. I'm, I it 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 really irks me that they took out those uh the uh the Toto songs from Jedi, like they took out yeah. the Sly Snoodle song and then the Ewok song at the end. Like dude, yeah. those are like some of my favorite songs growing up. I like and I am Toto so songs. heard about it. Yeah. Changing so. changing visuals is one thing, but changing the sound yeah. yeah, it just hits differently. Like I agree. Really? Like, yeah. I, like, you know, I've kind of grown to accept it over the years. But like, right. I, when I have the despecialized, I sometimes show a new hope to my students. I always show mm-hmm. them the despecialized one. Yeah. Um, yep. It's just I. I just prefer whenever I have a chance to watch that. I do. Yeah. But like, yeah, man. And I also have I have the VHS tapes of the widescreen THX. Oh, which that's is cool. super super hard. Like, I do too. Yeah. Like it's it's not like a common thing to have. Like people didn't really do widescreen back yeah, then. Yeah, that letterbox. Yeah, letterboxed. But um, that's I mean, for a long time, that was all I would watch. Totally. No, well, I get it. This is on topic. I don't know if you do pickups here, but this is actually a recent pickup. Brand new okay, inbox. 
Cabe and Whoa, Mustache. Shit. That's awesome. That's so I cool. got myself some 90s Power of the Force Animal Warriors from, from a galaxy far, far away. There you go. Um, yes. And there's there's a couple of us who are going to be um, for May, for May the 4th, we're going to be doing some throwbacks and reviewing some old 90s Powers oh, nice. of the Force. Uh, oh, that's cool. I love those figures. Those are coming. Power of the Force if, does if not the, uh, get the love it deserves. If and the affordable once they phase out the, the next has that is is the uh, cantina like some people predict, mm -hmm. then that those will be those will be nice. So I'm in. <laughs> yeah, Say I mean, no listen more. for you can like just like you said, you can go to like a comic shop or a collectible shop, find brand new on card Power of the Force figures for like yeah, fifteen like bucks, mm -hmm. and they it's made awesome. some really yeah even less, and made some mm -hmm. really they made some really great characters in that line. Yep. Um, and just going along what you said before about like the changing the music, that was the one thing about Return of the Jedi in the theater was the Psy Snoodles, the that yeah, I love the it. musical part at Jabba's. It was like the the it new one so is good. just grating on the on the ear with the it new really music. Is. It really is. Really. Yeah. All right. Yeah. And it's just a short, it is. I mean, it's, you know, the other one was La Phoenix, but I don't know. There was something about that that felt a little bit more galaxy far, far away than the music video shift. It just but, felt yeah. like it, it, I thought I don't it was like a really nice, it, it was a very nice, like, compliment. It, 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 I felt like it complimented the Cantina Jazz. Like, it was like, mm -hmm. you know, it, it just felt Jeez. like it was from the same, like, Region, I guess I should say. Rick says thirsty he's a thirsty Batman. Batman. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Empire Special Edition. What's Empire Special Edition? So Empire, oh, the they Empire. didn't change as much. They mm -hmm. did. They show the Wampa like, more tastefully. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. like, yeah, they, but like it, from what I remember, they show the Wampa more, and then they show like Vader walking to his uh, mm -hmm. to his shuttle on the uh, on Cloud City. Uh, they added this really annoying, like fake sounding yell when Luke jumps, you know, whenever yeah. he decides not to go with Vader. I think they've taken that out since because it like it kind of undid what he was doing. You know, uh, those are the only two things I can really think of offhand. It, it well, seemed like a ton of like, yeah, they did a ton of like nice clean edits like for Hoth yeah. and cleaned up, you know, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Stuff that I, that like felt like it needed it. Like I know the uh, like the cockpit was like slightly translucent when they were like zooming around the a the ATATs. Mm -hmm. Man, we just went full Star Wars, didn't we? <laughs> oh man, yeah, it's Star Wars of the Kingdom. Thanks for coming, yeah. guys. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and real quick, I uh, just wanted to 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 uh, what does Jay say? Uh, plus something in real quick. Oh my god, I have so many tabs open. Um, going back to the. Uh, the intern for a day thing. I don't know if you guys have seen this graphic yet. Uh, it was just released, I guess, in connection with the intern for a day uh, lottery. Um, so there you go. There's that. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> How many times has she won it? Twice so this far. This is her 25th anniversary of winning it. It's That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. That's funny. Just go on. Every, like what? 20, 20, 21, 22, and 23, right? Well, the first year, well, Ryan won the I first year. Acted for the Kickstarter that yes. year. Oh yeah, there and was the lottery it, that year. That's right. Yeah, the two years after that, she won. Yeah, and that's that's courtesy of the Just Shelvet Boys. So thank thank you, Curtis and Jesse. Appreciate that. Love it. That's great. But a walk, bro. Uh, <laughs> hey, here we go. <laughs> And I brought that up because hand candy, bro. <laughs> there um, it is. Which is the awesome. term that was coined for a walk. Um, I think it's been used elsewhere, but it's definitely appropriately yeah. applied, in my opinion. But I've, I've I've heard it used more in connection with a walk than maybe any other toy line. You know, with you know the number one toy line on this show is. I mean, we talk about everything, but the number one toy line is are the Legions lines from Four Horsemen. And right. people always say with the legions figures is you've got to get them in hand. You know when you get them mm -hmm. in hand, oh, yeah. everything. 
I think that's true for a walk too. Uh, Jason and brick. I was telling you guys before we came on that, you know, I collect so much stuff. I've been trying to cut down and not go in on everything that is cool. So a walk initially, the first six inch line was something that I didn't go in and thought it looked cool, but was trying to stay away. And eventually I got my first one in hand. Uh, yeah, I got some feedback. That was it. Um, you know, uh, I have, I've got a decent collection of the mythic stuff. I think I might have like 20 figures, and, but like I, I went pretty heavy on the cosmic stuff. I don't know. Something about the cosmic legion like really spoke to me. So, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, I love the mythic legions, but cosmic stuff, I have a lot more, but, uh, one of the, one of the things that's so nice when we're at conventions is people you know, there's, there's different kinds of customers. There's the people that like just show up, they just want everything. And then there's the people that have been on the fence and have just seen them basically online. And then they see them in person mm -hmm. and like, Oh, I get this, you know, and they'll get like one or two figures. And usually we're at a, a three day convention. Right. And so they'll get the one or two figures and we're just kind of like, okay, we'll see you later. And then like the next yeah. day they'll come and get like four of them, you know, and then the last day they'll just be like, just give me the rest of, of everything, you know, <laughs> just like, sure, you know, but uh, yeah, it's really cool to see the fan response and, and then people that are just in, being introduced to the brand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did. Um, <clears throat> my first AWOC figure was Blight um, because purple. Um, and once yeah. I got that figure in hand, I'm like, man, these guys are really fun. So Thank I you. have now backed uh, Series 2, Primal Series 2. Um, oh, you know what? Uh, all right. So what I did is I pulled out a couple of key things, I think. And again, I, I want to sort of get down and have you guys talk a little bit about the offerings where we're sort of at and where we could go. But I pulled out some of the, the things that really jumped out at me that I really love. First one is we have unlocked Spectral Pale. Um, and this guy, it is literally like you guys made the figure for me. Like you're like, all right, what has the nice guy? Cool dude. I'm Lady such a sucker. The guy want to be clear glow in the dark stuff. What can I say? Because this guy's clear and glow in the dark, right? That's right. He does glow in the dark. Yeah. So he is an exclusive to the Kickstarter, and then possibly a uh, event, uh, like an event right. exclusive component. Yeah. Too, so, right? so whatever we have left, we'll sell. You know, limited numbers. All you know, when we do a convention, uh, depending mm -hmm. on what the figure is. Uh, we'll do limited numbers of each figure per day just to make sure that someone has a chance if they're just like a one day uh, uh, con goer. Uh, mm -hmm. So this figure will probably do five per day of the figure, you know, five to 10, depending on how much we have left over. But if you want to guarantee yourself the future figure of the year, <laughs> uh, don't, don't feel the that way you're not worried about it yeah so um <laughs> spectral pale was definitely something that was there from the beginning but as an add-on so if you want spectral pale you'll have to back something else and then you can uh add him in um and as you said it's yeah mm -hmm. as an add-on um he is a little bit has a little bit of a different price tag you can see that in the bottom left it's a 40 dollar mm -hmm. because it's a sort of limited edition but the rest of the figures for the kickstarter are at 33 dollars for standard figs and then 45 for the slightly larger brawler buck and then there's a couple of new ones that have been added this weekend as unlocks that are um, a little bit more you got the elephant the rhino and the hippo and we can get to those as as they come up but um okay but yeah spectral pale is cool there you Speaking go mamba <laughs> So Mamba so this was is... I I set up where so on the on the right there on your screen mm -hmm. is where the pledges were earlier today. I think we're already yeah. 250 right now. Somebody can update oh, me what? on that. But I earlier mean, now today, I gotta check. Yeah, no, me too. <laughs> yeah. So we were at we were at 248, 680 earlier today. Ooh, to close. get to this massive guy who I believe, mm -hmm, Brick, mm -hmm. you can and Jason, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe these guys are comparable to Mythic Legion's ogre scale figures. Yeah, that's Correct. right. So this that's height, right. height wise. giant elephant guy. Height wise. Height now, wise, yeah. If you look at it, he's almost as wide as he is tall. So mm -hmm. he'll definitely be a showpiece. You know, like I, I'm kind of picturing, I'm probably going to put some of the the uh, the ape 
a walk figures kind of like on their on his shoulders or like maybe have him like holding one something like that you know <laughs> yeah you know it's funny like if you uh so mamba is definitely for the longest time was sort of at the top uh, of the uh, kickstarter as far as the things to be unlocked but just in the last uh, last weekend we we added two other pachyderms or pa what we call the, the pachydine um so we were saying for the longest time no sleep till mamba like a beastie boys tour reference right but now it's like no sleep till zwar and vitus and just you know what screw it let's <laughs> just not sleep and keep unlocking some animals because um they're cool man they're they're as you said show pieces and that's the one thing I love so much about Mythic Legions because uh, there's oh the sheer variety yeah, exactly. of body types, oh, right? Yeah. The, the, and so with this line now, um, if you wouldn't mind going back to that that scaling image a couple of slides back, yeah, like no this this um, Kickstarter initially it was like, hey, let's unlock four new box, four new bucks, new, four new animal body types. But now, as you see here on the screen, um, really, if we unlock everything. We're talking about unlocking seven new body types for this line, a line that's really only been in people's hands since last February. So definitely ambitious, <laughs> definitely a little bit wild, um, definitely very Jason. Um, but this is true. just to, to think that we're fully going to get like like a, a true animal kingdom potentially from this, like that's that's the goal. So we're just going to like try to keep unlocking them. And this is kind of like the, the loose scale image and from left to right, just so that, you, you know, like I know with legions, we've got really cool terminology that we've sort of like embraced and taken on with like 1.0, mm -hmm. 2.0. So from the left to kind of translate to, to a walk talk, um, you've got that rabbit and that's a speedster buck. Then you've got, the fem then you've got the female buck there. There's two figures for both of those, uh, actually sorry three figures available in the, each of those bucks so far then the third one there's pale who was like a uh the equivalent i guess of a 1.0 figure the original figure the original buck then you've got the right. the reptiles there in that beautiful bright blue fun people were talking about tmnt earlier that's what i love about this line is like that fun pop of color then moving over you've got the birds um uh so that's you know we'll see that in a little bit then you've got that brawler buck slowly inching it up a little bit um, with that lion there, Hannibal. Then you've got um, Thane, which was something that, again, was there since wave two. And then move over one. You've got the rhino. That is, two, what are we What are you in the calling him? I think we're calling, ooh, I forget. Oh, the heavies. heavies. The heavies, the heavies, the heavy buck. The heavies. Um, the heavy buck. And then we've got the uh, mamba <laughs> with the giant buck. So... I don't know where it goes from there. If we get anything bigger, like the whale, I don't know what you're going to call that. But my um, God, yeah, we joked about that later. last yesterday. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Oh my God! <laughs> Did you say a whale? <laughs> Ignore that. That was a joke. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. So anyway, as we were saying. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so the elephant. The reason why I put this up, guys. This is this is serious. If you've ever liked me. If you like anything that's good in the world, I need you to help me up your pledge for AWOC in the next three days because I need this elephant. You'll thank yourself later. I need this massive elephant in my life. And we can do help it. Help me help you. Everyone needs it. Exactly. <laughs> you want better streams? You want better giveaways? <laughs> Give me this elephant. I'll never ask for anything there again. There you go. Never again. I love um, the pit. Tell Curtis to just take that super chat money and put it towards. <laughs> That's right. Super chat should be live right now. Let me get this yeah, elephant, yeah. and I, listen. I will trade you a favor. Okay, that's not a problem. <laughs> you want this Swerve Strickland figure? You got it. He's yours. <laughs> um, I love it. I love it. Seriously. All right. So let's let's d uh, dive into the uh, the Kickstarter a little bit more for people that don't know all the offerings. Mm. Um, how's my how's my uh zoom going here okay Ooh. yeah okay there we go all right so uh brick and jason i will just scroll down through these offerings um you know curtis first of all <laughs> curtis first of all <laughs> a wizard is never late he arrives precisely when he means to mm-hmm <clears throat> And as far as the all giveaways are out, people have received all their giveaways. Curtis, you're a pain in the ass. I love you. Mm -hmm. 
And in case, you know, since we're talking timely shippings, I don't know if that, that might also be a, uh, addressed to, to Animal Warriors of the Kingdom and Spear. I think it's probably a good thing to bring up. But we know that the first time around uh, with a first Kickstarter... Okay, but still, just I, I want to I want to throw it out there because it has come up before, and I, I think it's important to let people know, particularly here in this stream, that um, yeah, there were definitely some issues with getting people their figures that first time around, and you know that was the first time out. Um, literally, they got everything, and it dropped in Louisiana, and it was a, a cool in-house team that tried to do it, but there was it was a first time doing it, and now this time it was, around, um, it was very yep. overwhelming. Yeah. We, we weren't prepared for the, the popularity of it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, uh, for this one, none of that is uh, is really in play anymore because uh, Spiro's going with Fulfill Right, a party that handles fulfillment and has been doing so. That is their business. And so um, they know how to handle not only getting these things out to people, but also dealing with the issues that come up with international shipping in particular. Um, so I don't know if there's anything more that you wanted to say specifically about that, Jason. Or not? Uh, you know, the, the thing that's nice about Fulfill Right is uh, it happens to be in New Jersey, but uh, the thing that's really going to help out is that they've got the infrastructure built out for it. Uh, they have, you know, a, a lot of the issues that we were having is we, we would pack the boxes and get them ready to go, but then the logistics of trying to get the post office to, to pick up as much as they should, it would get backed up. We'd rent trucks to bring directly to the post office. They even give us trouble about that. We'd have to go to like several post offices. Uh, mm -hmm. None of that's going to be an issue with the with with fulfill right. They're going to take care of all of it. Um, they've also got uh, you know everything figured out as far as like international orders stuff like that. So, uh, long story short, it's going to be a lot smoother and a lot faster this go around. Cool. And with that less than fun stuff out of the way, let's talk about some cool ass animals. You're looking at um first I'll say so the way this thing is organized oh, no. is by by buck. So um this is the reptile buck. This is Corvius. We are now at the point where you can kind of see the alternate heads there. It's important for people to recognize that in the past there were head packs that were shipped out separately that people had to order. That's all gone. That's a thing mm -hmm. of the past. Um, right now with this Kickstarter, all the alternate heads that you're going to see here, and you'll notice that they had to sort of be unlocked. All of those come with the figure. So you'll see here Corvius, the blue uh, lizard with the alternate head next to it and the horny toad. All of these have alter, uh, all of these. I actually kind of like that name, Corvius jaws. the Blue. Corvius the Blue? Yes. And, yep. And yeah, then, I like uh, that. They've all got the articulated jaws and, you know, they're doing their thing. So feel free to scroll through and we can kind of just take a look. I think we've been doing this enough to get a sense that if we take too much time talking about each figure, right. um, yeah, right. we take up way too much time on people's streams. So you see Gresh there. Gresh has definitely become, um, for some reason, he for, really for, has. He really for has. real reasons, it's become super popular. Um, this is definitely yeah, one I, that and a I lot noticed of on one of the other streams you you guys did is that when this Kickstarter was announced, I mean, the figure that a lot of people gravitated towards, myself included, was uh, Gresh. And I was like, mm -hmm. I think I said it in one of the streams was like, you had me at Chameleon Guy. And you guys, I think, had actually said <laughs> right. that we were actually surprised that people were fell so hard for this guy. He's such a yeah, fun I guess you figure. Just never like, I, I, will, I, I will say this, you know, like, for for pr essentially all the figures, they are representations of characters from the from the comic books first and foremost. Um, the only exception to that was Blight. We kind of did it almost like as an inside joke, kind of like our homage to um, you know the situation with Snake Eyes in the original eighty two run. They they ran out of deco, so they just get, did get him all black, you know. And we're like, well, let's just do like a negative version of Pale. And then he was so popular that we worked him into the comic book. And now he's just like, you know, he's an integral part of the comic book and the characters. And I'm feeling I've already got like a story set up for Gresh. So uh, I, I think, you know, since he's so popular, people will enjoy getting to experience him in the comic itself. <clears throat> nice, nice. 
So yeah, I mean, we can just move through. Gresh is dope. He's got articulated eyes. It comes with that alternate snake head. You see here, like a special. There's a weapon set for every single type of buck. So for the reptiles, they get the cold blooded weapon set. You'll probably notice uh, a lot more dry brushing and stuff going in on this line this time around. Um, here we've got the figure that was unlocked uh, pretty early, day eight. And so this is the reptile army builder in the heavy infantry for House Ver... Ver oh, gosh, how are you saying? You're saying Verandi, correct? Verandi. Gotcha. Verandi. Yep. So um, I love this figure. I love I love the... the, the red head in this the colors the ah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you get an I alternate love head. colors what can i say and i love you for it in a world of purple so here you go so here's the the the, the whole the all the alternate heads have been unlocked yep so again those are all just in in the uh figures now if you scroll down this is uh jason's Quick Photoshop work to give you some inspiration to consider maybe buying more than one of these guys so that you can actually get those heads on the shelf. Maybe a little uh, verandy uh, and reptile troops out there. And I think I think this is an important point because you guys, love it. you guys have been on a million streams and you've said it a million times, but this is like the kind of detail that I think a lot of people might miss. Mm. You get these heads. Definitely, with the yeah. totally. You don't have to add it on. It's not something else you have to get. It's not another unlock at this point. You get these heads with those figures. Mm -hmm. It comes with it. Exactly. So it's in incredible value and a lot of fun, different looks. And it's going to mean you're going to need multiples of these figures, guys. Yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. And now King Hannibal. Uh, uh, these are the brawlers. You want to tell us about uh, Hannibal, Jason? The brawlers. Yeah, so this is our, our first uh, brawler buck. Actually, I take it back. The Void is the first brawler buck, but this is our mm. second brawler buck, the first one in this actual Kickstarter. So this is a new body type. It's a bigger, beefier version of the 1.0 body. It still has all the same articulation. However, these will be pinless. So moving forward, we're doing pinless bodies. Um if you're concerned about the head articulation, don't be so worried about that because the little tassels on the sides are um, a, a different part. So like, in other words, it's kind of like floating almost like a scarf. So Kali mm -hmm. Prime has that as well. Um, and then they all come with big old giant chunky weapons that I'm sure will work with mythic figures. Uh, they'll work with, you know, like the Hulk or if, you, if you're a fan of Marvel Legends figures, you could probably work it into that. I'm sure some Masterverse stuff like Beast Man would enjoy some of these weapons as well. Yeah, and the fact is now you've got this brand new buck, but multiple characters to go along with it. Here's Kali Prime, right. blue Ooh. guy. <laughs> Kali the blue. Oh, we got another weapon set. There you go. Kali, Kali the blue. <laughs> Kali also the blue. We got another great weapon set here. And this guy, Grimes, I have seen a lot of people talking about this guy. So definitely some uh, some canine vibes here. Mm. Not um, enough canines in the toy world. Not enough canines, right? Opinion. Yeah. Now, now that we've got, you know, this is our second canine. We've actually got one for wave four. We've got the hyena that's going to be out this summer. Uh, oh, yeah. But this mm -hmm. is our first official dog, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I will right. say that because dogs are all different shapes and sizes you'll see dogs from the brawler buck to the the 1.0 the pale buck uh to mm -hmm. the speedster buck that's going to be a little bit lower there's another canine that we'll get to as well so uh if you're a fan of dogs we will be getting a bunch of dog figures in the future and and this is our first foray into that uh that species so if you like big beefy guys that's here too oh here's yeah. all the alternate heads this is your jam that's right Wait, yeah, and you can see there in the renders, um, oop, you can see there in the renders, that's sort of what Jason was talking about. You'll notice on Hannibal, the lion, um, you, you don't see those two tufts of hair because that's a separate piece so that you can actually still take advantage of the cool articulation on this line and get that head turning with, you know, without having to worry about the hair blocking the, the movement. So. Smart move. You know, I mentioned before about like little details that you might not, everyone might not be aware of. I don't mm -hmm. think I appreciated the fact that we get a cigar smoking head. 
um, <laughs> which is kind of cool it, it, and a big selling point. It's funny because we were, you know, we were discussing it behind the scenes. We were like, I don't know, should we do the cigar? And we were like, well, they, he comes with firearms and like stabby weapons, so I think the cigar is probably <laughs> like the least of the 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 issues here. So, and it really speaks yeah, to his hair. I'm, I'm gonna have this as it's his alternate head, but this is the head I'm personally displaying with. Hundred percent. I'll be right. I'm not going anywhere. I'm just I'm grabbing a flash drive so I can print raving. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally multi. What was it, Bill? Put put the bulldog with the cigar at the <clears throat> diorama of the poker table. <laughs> yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> So then we have some of the female bucks here. So Mother Molly, oh, right? My favorites, yeah. My current favorites, man. They just keep adding, and I'm just like, uh. yes, Mother Mala, integral to the lore. I got to say that um, if you're not familiar with the lore in the comic book, one beautiful story, excellent world, but it's um, people get confused. Like when you saw the dog, a lot of the questions were like, why does he have pants, and why does he have a gun? Because I think the, the misconception is that this is more like a, a fantasy leaning thing, a sword and sorcery thing, but it's actually like sword sorcery sci-fi. It's very much Masters of the Universe in that way, or John Carter from Mars, where there's like exactly. laser guns. Yeah. That's and, such a great yeah. way to say it. So it's like she's got magic, clearly. Um, so you'll see that here. This is the <clears> first <throat> of the line that I think we're getting, yeah, that we're getting magic effects for. So the fire on that sword um, comes off as well as the ice on that shield. Um, Mother Mala is a protagonist on the hero side. And if you go to the next one, we've got Jadu on the antagonist side. Oh, I don't know if you have her there. All right. What am I saying? I forgot. This is go. the Kickstarter. Yeah, that's right. So she's sort of on the antagonist side and you can kind of get a sense that she tends to lean in more on the technology side of things um Definitely. so she mm -hmm. shows a little bit more of that that sci-fi angle um that i was kind of referring to and again man i just i really love um the mix of things and if you uh wouldn't mind i think i, I don't think it's on the kicks actually we can keep going we can keep going and i'll come back to it so yeah there's yeah, jadu I and i now, go ahead. I have some more in the uh, I'm not sure if it's what you're talking about, but I have a couple more in the slideshow. Okay. But also, okay. I did want to just take a take a pause for a second. So mm -hmm. anybody Brick had mentioned a couple of times about the lore. Uh, that's something else people not be totally aware of. Is there's some deep lore here. This is really a comic yeah. story first. I had yeah. actually got a couple of the comics at last year's Leech Con, Leech Con I think. Nice for my kid, for my for my son. And if anybody is interested in learning more about the lore, what you need to do is you need to check out Brick Something's channel. Brick hey, has, hey. oh my great, god, and it is yes. on your main channel, right? You need to go it there. Is. There's some great exploratory, explanatory videos that he made with some really great graphics, like really yeah. incredible well, stuff there. It blew that me really away. Takes you through the stories. Yeah, I appreciate so. that, Jonathan. Yeah, um, Adam and I, Adam Highly Articulated, do a show on my channel called A Walk Talk. And then mm -hmm. over on his, we do monkey talk, uh, monkey business, sorry, live. But on, on my channel, I put together this thing called the Kingdom Chronicles. That, and there's a like a four minute video that just sort of sums up um, the the world that we're in, the sci fi elements, mm -hmm. the, the the cloning elements, the mixing of animal and humanoid DNA and all of that kind of stuff. So I know that feels spoilery, but it's page 10 of the comic books and it's so pivotal to the world that we just sort of felt like wanted people to know that. And it's kind of done like a, a motion comic style with like, you know, trying to do the whole voice mm -hmm. acting thing. Because seriously, this is like the toy line that I, I really want to see and the comic book line that I want to see turned into that Netflix animated show someday, man. Because um, it's, it's such a beautiful world that I think would really resonate with young people, old folks. It hits some of that Saturday morning adventure um, nostalgia vibes while also like modern storytelling, I think. So... That that's my pitch. You, let's get it done, Netflix. <laughs> yeah, come on, let's let's get this going here. So again, there's more really great, like well painted weapons here. A, a, mm. a great array of different things that you can use. Yep. And here we have Jessa, another great female buck. Uh, yeah, and you see her alternate head there with a cool mohawk. Um, that's um, I, Jason's got a thing for mohawks, but uh, I, apparently I do. I apologize. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize for nothing. 
No, it's beautiful. It's amazing. I think she looks so good in that that color armor set with that nice little hint of turquoise under around her neck. Um, she's great, and she's actually a tribute to uh, Jason's grandmother. Yeah, to my my granny. She was uh, she was a hundred and four years old when she passed away, and uh, she wow. was she's from Wyoming. Ooh, so I wow. thought it was a great little kind of homage to have the uh, the uh, the pistols included with her character. Uh, and, and like Brick was saying, it is an army builder character, so it, it has the alternate head. Again, this is another one where I'm not sure do I want to use the alternate head for the, the main head or not. Uh, but that's what's fun about, you know, army building. You can you don't have to decide. You can have one of each. Yep. For it's a sure. beautiful looking figure, too. And a great balance, Thank too, you. because the, the line has such great beautiful, bright, vibrant colors, which is something that I really am drawn to. But here we have a little bit more earth tones, but also some gold there. It's a, it plays well from the having this mixed in with the bright colors. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. You'll, you'll notice that all the fair lists are like very earth tones. So uh, it, it is a, a nice little kind of like change of, of pace from the ultra saturated. And then of course, because I love color, I had to do that little kind of pop of turquoise in her little, her neck wrap. Yeah. Yeah. Right Again, Fairless being sort of like the the um, I guess the, the more feline uh, clan in the store in right. the house. So here's the tech that I was hinting mm -hmm. at. Um, you can see these these were revealed uh, the, the, early this week. Um, the alt heads there on the left. That's Mala, the first character that we were showing, the first women character we were showing, and then the middle is Jadu. So you can kind of see a little bit of the culture kind of worked into this world of sort of like the house Chunari, um, the protagonist embracing more of that, like, you know, sword and sorcery, I guess a little bit more natural kind of vibe. And then you've got, uh, kind of one with har uh, harmony with nature. Yep. And then you've got Jadu in the middle there. And I don't know if you've got the paint masters, but damn, when I saw that, when, when Jason threw in the picture of this thing being painted in progress, I was like, just like, what the heck is that? Yeah, I was like, what am I even looking at? It's amazing. So, <laughs> yep. I actually don't have the paint masters. They're being photo uh, photographed by uh, okay. Danny. But do you have the photos by any chance of that? Uh, um, let or, me uh, see real quick. Actually, Jonathan. I think jo uh, I'm asking Jonathan because I think he Okay, might. I was going to say I can Maybe try to not. pull them from the Google I Drive. Probably, if this is what you're – I, I want to make sure I, we're talking about the same thing. Give me a second. If not – I have it up uh, in the in the ready if you see it there. Uh, so tell me if this is what you're talking about or not. That is exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> I just, dude, I just, it just, it, to me, it captures what I was sort of She's saying earlier. Like if, if you're unfamiliar with the the world, you're you're looking at like maybe you know a sword and sorcery thing, but this is very much in that like Motu kind of blending of the things, right? The Thunder of the right, Barbarian exactly. mix. So I love the tech versus, you know, with the sort of naturalistic kind of vibe going on. So I think she looks great. Um, things are still very much in progress. You're thinking about, um, oh. is it a different eye color? Oh, there you go. She's at her yeah. eye. I changed her eye color to the, uh, the same color as her hair. So it's like a, yeah. a little pink, a, a little pop of pink in there. It looks really striking. It, it's, I think it yeah. was the right choice after doing that. Um, yeah, that would it, be for the job, like did, the Jadu the, head. The yeah, yeah. And then this one is Mala's alt head. And again, like I don't know if folks are old enough to to know Fist of the North Star back in the day. I am, and like very it. much like that whole post apocalyptic uh, vibe. And there's something right. about this that that strikes me. It's just like, oh, that's great. It hits all those notes while being a new property. That's the thing I love so much about AWOX. It like definitely it hits some. A little bit of that nostalgia. I was like, oh, this reminds me of stuff, but brings me into this whole new world and whole new story. Right. So. And this is just another one of those color palettes, color combos that I look at and I'm like, oh, I love it. I love. Thank you. You've got purples here, brighter blues and metallics all in the same figure. Like to me, it really looks this mixture looks cool to me. Yeah, Thank I agree. You. Yeah. I, I think a lot about color before I actually, you know, bring color to the figure itself. I'll think about it for a couple of days before I actually, you know, lay the, the paint onto the figure. So it's always nice to know that people enjoy those, uh, the color selections that we pick out. 
Okay, so all right. So let's go back to this real quick because there there still are a few more. Listen, guys, the Kickstarter has so you. much to offer. There's a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And I feel a little bit, you know, again, thank you for taking the time. I hope folks are into this, but like, it's a lot. And I think that's also like kind of the, the exciting thing to think that this indie company is like, Hey, we want to crowdfund because there's, we need your help to, to unlock these things. It's this is truly lot, yeah. like grassroots, like let's fundraise because it's going to be used to invest in the line and take it to this whole other place. And it's a lot to talk about. So so this right, is Kanji, right. and this guy jumped out at me right away because he's a rabbit. <laughs> and I like I have I'm in my basement right now. So I've said this a gazillion times is that generally this is where most of my collection lives. Um, but there is a shelf uh, on top of where the TV is in my living room where sometimes I'll make displays that are relevant to the holidays or something like that. And oh, that that's is fun. Like that's cool. Approved uh, action figure space first floor and i've been trying to build up like an easter themed That's display cool. that go. has all kinds of rabbit figures this guy needs to be in it that's great man and just so you know there is talk about like you know future once these things are unlocked and these things are made um <clears throat> we were just talking the other day about like ooh, what about like a chocolate bunny right um <gasps> yeah so oh my god <laughs> th th that's the kind of conversations that are happening Listen, they can go right next to the uh, the recent biblical adventures uh, yeah. offering. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm That's so right excited here. about that! Yes, look at and that. Here's, uh, so here's that? Boone, which can go right next to your Jeremy Gerard Kitsune. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So these are all the speedster buck, a smaller, slightly build. You've got the uh, Boone, who is a part of the part of the Pirates Guild that have yet to be sort of revealed in the current story arc this is sort of coming up down the line i think this is probably a good place to mention that that comic book that we're talking about has been available directly from spiro for a while totally self-published but as of march the same day that this kickstarter launched um diamond's been carrying it and and, and throwing it out uh for to your local comic book shops so it's available uh, number one just started in march number two is coming in may and then number three will come in June, number four in July, and so on. And so one through five is that first story arc. Come the second story arc is where we'll get really introduced to these pirates, to Boone and then uh, Grimes, who we saw earlier. Yeah. yeah, I forget what stream you were on where you were talking about the different, you know, portions of the lore and the story and, and mm -hmm. the different factions and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. And when you mentioned the pirates, my ears definitely perked up and I'm like, pirates you say pirates um, eh? and also you can see some of the um some of the tech aspect here you know boone's got a winter soldier alarm right mm -hmm. here he sure does uh yeah that's one of those things where people are like wait why does he have a, a metal arm and yep that's exactly right there's technology yeah, so, out there in this world so yeah the, the pirate guild was slightly introduced on in wave two but uh, as story wise, they'll they'll be featured heavily in the second story arc. Yeah, uh, they essentially control all the trade routes throughout the the, the animal kingdom. Uh, all the great houses basically have to go through them in order to you know transport goods, uh, you know move uh, dignitaries back and forth. Uh, so they've got access to all the different kind of uh, resources that people are, are shipping back and forth and. You know, if they come across some some tech they might like, uh, they're, they're definitely going to incorporate it into their uh, to their loadouts. And foxes are known to to bite off limbs whenever they get trapped, so we might get a little <laughs> a little one shot a uh, little one shot kind of explaining that. Nice <laughs> one shot comic. I mean, that's really cool, man. It really is. That's cool. Another weapon set, horrid assassin. Is this yeah, the, so the that was uh, – it is the same speedster buck. We're still in that sort of speedster section. This was the unlocked figure for that buck, and, and it has been un unlocked. And so it's got um, more of an army builder vibe, and there will be an alternate head that hasn't been shown yet. Um, but, you know, you see you see the load out there. He's got that cool little, like uh, – what is it? Like a blunderbuss? But what I love yep. about these figures is um, you know, it says they're extra hands. We haven't talked about this yet, but each figure will come with three pairs of hands, just like the, the um, original waves one and wave two and now wave three figures. 
but there's always a, um, what do you call it? A vertical wrist in that, uh, vertical articulation. So he can hold that sort of properly like a, uh, flashlight, which is kind of cool. Uh, a quick question from the chat. I think this came up before. I, I could be mm -hmm. wrong about that, so I'm sorry if I'm wrong about that. But question from Andy, the collector. He asks, hey, Jason, will we get a regular arm for Boone as well? Uh, not for point. Boone, but we're going to be tooling a, an organic arm. Uh, so we will get you know a Fox character with without the mechanical arm in the future. And he won't look like Boone. He'll be his own character. So uh, if you really interested in, in a fox for now you'll get boone and then uh, eventually we'll be uh, offering a fox again at some point in the future without the metal arm yeah good question uh and again the it doesn't stop the alternate heads have continued uh mm -hmm. alternate heads for both kanji and boone and then is this a uh is this a hard assassin potential tease over here that's what it is. It's less a t it's a tease. It's uh it's just not there yet. That's the reality. We just of haven't the uploaded the head. Yeah. Yeah. yeah They're yeah, running and gunning. That. Really, it's like people are drawing and then translating to sculpts, and you, you've yeah, seen it's all been the different offerings. So. Yeah, we're yeah. we're working behind the scenes. I'm 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 setting up the second part of raving to to print uh, as soon as this one's done printing. And then again, we we looked before at the future figure of the year, which is special <laughs> pale. Talk yes. about him before. Uh, he's worth backing for him. So back the figure, you can add him on. Uh, and now, uh, can you guys? I need to step away for just a second. But can you talk to to us a little bit about the birds? Because I know a lot of people are talking about this. And again, yeah, I know a lot of Legion fans are going to watch this stream, and we have a special place in our heart for birds which are not so easy to come by now in legions and true. legions adjacent lines but now yeah. here's your chance all right well uh raving originally uh on the kickstarter was just a a, a shadow uh in silhouette so you couldn't see him and uh now that we've moved significantly further down the road not only did they uh, did we sort of show the concept art? But now we see here the the render of what raving will look like. Um, so you're seeing him here without wings. So there are wing attachments that I think uh, there is another image um, that I can bring up in a little bit. But um, they attach to the bottom of the arms in two places. So there's one attachment for the uh, tricep area and one for the forearm area, um, and. I, I'm with you on the wanting birds uh, on our shelves. The cool thing about these birds is they're all going to have alternate gripping feet that can grab weapons um, because, duh, like, <laughs> why not? Uh, so that's a thing. And uh, I love the way the talons are on this. Um, tons of weapon storage on this. That's something that, that a lot of us have been asking for. So, um, you know, trying to work that in where it makes sense as we move down the line. Um, Ragan, I don't know if you, you have, you have the power, right? To <laughs> I don't. Oh, you don't. Okay. That's no. fine. Okay. So, uh, but there are alternate images, uh, that I, I would love to, for folks to sort of see the alternate head, which is awesome. And then the wings as well. But there are three different birds that are being offered uh none of them have been unlocked so that's that's kind of where we're at we're inching towards 250 in the next couple of days before this thing ends in the morning on wednesday we're, we're trying to do that and we're hoping you know for that that traditional crowdfund kickstarter swoop up at the end um and we hopefully can do it. We unlock these birds yeah yeah that's the goal anyway so this is raving I don't know if uh, I don't know what else you can see. Can you do you see the uh, at the bottom there at all? You said it popped up for you, right, Ryan? Yeah, but you I, can't you can't turn it, it on. I got it on my end, but I can't. Yeah, gotcha. Oh shit! Yeah, I just remember. I, I can pull up the Kickstarter. Yeah, it's we actually not, did it as an update. Oh, if you look at the latest, somebody's yeah, the latest update, we'll have it. Yeah, <laughs> it was Jonathan's back. back. Yeah. All right, setting God. this stuff in here. This stuff hey, real quick, Jonathan, would you mind? I, I got that thing uh, 
being shown to to um, present. I want to definitely show the audience. Oh, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on one second. Here, go boom. For here Sorry, is here we go. Raven. Look at that. Look at that handsome uh, guy. Yeah, um, this is raving, and I wanted to show people this is not yet on the Kickstarter. It's on an update though. Um, this is what he'll look like with his alternate head with that built in, um, hat. But for me, more importantly, definitely want people to sort of see what we're thinking about in terms of those wing attachments. So you can kind of see it coming out here on the forearm. And then if we see the reverse, oops, you can kind of see how that's working. So there's one piece up here and then one piece down here and it's, uh, being sculpted and engineered in a way where when you bend the arm, it'll be sort of a continuous wing. There won't be like a gap, if that makes sense, because there's two pieces. If you you can kind of see it here. Um, Overlap. Yeah, Bill, I'm getting those. I don't know about you, man, but I'm getting those uh, distance learning uh, <laughs> <laughs> flashbacks. flashbacks right now. Uh, but you can kind of see here a wing. <clears throat> and uh, so that, that's the layered on top of this other piece here. So that when you get that band, it'll sort of look like a one continuous wing connected here. If, if folks are familiar with the uh, Lightning Collection, Power Rangers, uh, Tengu Warriors, or the Marvel Legends comic book Falcon, right. that sort of That's concept. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I don't know if we we haven't mentioned it, but just like we said pinless, but we also, just to continue all of... Uh, all of AWOC has the uh, double jointed, or at least the sort of these these bucks will have the double jointed elbows and um, knees. Anyway, that's all I wanted to to highlight here, Jonathan. Cool. I think he's definitely our most detailed figure. Uh, I'm super excited about it. Uh, the, it's printing in two parts, so like one of them is <laughs> going to be seven hours. Um, just oh. kind of hearing it print in the background and uh i have to print it tomorrow because we're going to be taking photographs of it on monday but uh yeah it, it's so cool to introduce the birds because again with the you know with the canines there's so many variables that you can do and you know just going on to our next figure meryl like he's like so different from raving it's like really bright pops of color a bard kind of more fun uh, comic relief excuse me character yeah, I love this character. Again, pops of color. Um, but if you take a look at that that lute there, the the instrument, it it will flip out. It's the same piece being engineered to sort of open up in half and turn into a bow. So this is your, you know, your chill musician who who when when necessary isn't is a little less chill. Robin Hood vibes. I have the little doodle for it. I almost threw it away. I was cleaning up yesterday and I almost threw it away and then I, I threw it in a drawer and I was like, oh man. <laughs> So glad I didn't toss it. And it's funny because it's not like it's it's legit just a doodle. It's nothing like special, but uh, it'll be fun. I'm gonna scan it in, and and we'll at some point we'll uh, look back and be like, wow, that was the humble beginnings of a really fun accessory. Yep. Scathing. Evil Again, birds I know like on another here. 180 from from uh from Merrill who's kind of fun and joyous, and this is obviously a loathsome loathsome bad guy villain, you know. Mm -hmm. A necromancer. We, we, We're getting right. dark here, guys. Exactly. And and we've had uh someone suggested uh his alternate head would be like a, a him wearing a bird skull and i was like done that's awesome you know so that's kind of one of the fun little things about doing a kickstarter is you know you can get some in some input that you're just like wow yeah let's do it that's a really cool idea yep yeah nice cyber rat i'm cyber with you I i'm with you the dark cyber crystal. rats dark crystal absolutely is skexy thing going yeah, on I, with yes it. definitely oh my god i love that movie growing up Same. what's funny is i really loved it but it was also like such a great movie, like for nap time, you know, because of the the darkness, the kind of slow pacing of the movie itself, especially the beginning, you know. Uh, so it was like equal parts enjoyable, but also like you could be kind of tricked into nap time when that sucker came on, you know. 
get some so nightmares. Here's a dumb, for... dumb question. What nah. does gripping feet refer to? Gripping feet? Gripping, oh. gripping feet, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. The, the, go for it. Brick, I actually sent you an image of it uh, in the in the um, Facebook chat, but it, okay. you know we've got a ton of requests for having gripping ape feet, and you know there was there was just a request. There wasn't any kind of like fleshed out. Like I was like, well, how are we are we supposed to make a grip? Is it like do you want it to grip a pencil? Do you want it to grip a branch? Do you want it to grip a a, a mop handle? What are you talking about? And then someone said. <laughs> We wanted to grip the weapons, and I was like, okay, that makes sense. Thank you. You know, so now uh, the birds will be the first characters to feature feet that have gripping kind of talons. So they'll he'll they'll be able to hold their weapons in their hands. So like if they're flying, they've obviously, you know, they got to stay in the air so they can use their feet to to hold their weapons. It's really cool. So you can put them on a flight stand. Right, but exactly. Yeah, weapons, it's like gonna be it, such yeah. a fun way to display them too. Like, I, I, it's because it's such a different type of animal. It's gonna mm -hmm. be some some poses that we weren't expecting, and, and that's always really enjoyable to watch. Well, I love this guy's vibes, and and again, like I said before, is that there is some kind of variety here, right? I talked before about the the mix of bright colors and some like uh, earth tones. There's right. some like brighter characters, but then you've got like a dark character, like this necromancer guy. Like, right. Yeah. Just from the yeah, render, like this guy to... looks really cool. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks for saying that. I just wanted like, you know, we're talking about the, the comic book. It's definitely um, fun for all ages, but it's also, it's, it's, there's a high stakes world. There's like, you know, there's a, there's a body count in the comics too. And some, some, you know, action and violence. So it's definitely like, so it's not um, out of nowhere, I guess, to have this really sort of dark character and like the way the right. world is set up, I can imagine him doing like some truly dark things story-wise. Right. Think, so then think there's also, like a again, secret in him. Mm. Also, incidentally, the book on which that uh, movie is based, Mrs. Fris Frisbee and the Rats of Nim. Yep. My favorite yep. book of all time. I didn't uh, even realize book. it was a book. Yep, oh, Robert yeah. C. O'Brien. Wow, yeah, Robert C. O'Brien, favorite book of all time. And wow. I love the movie. The book's obviously different and yeah, way right. better. Like yeah, so really? Good. Oh man, I can't wait yeah. to check it out. I'm excited. It's very cool. That's so it. cool. What? And of course, we've got another That's weapons cool. pack, a head pack. But now we're we noticing get to a pattern. Brutox, Brutox at 380. Yeah, this is again going back to the same book as the Void and Hannibal and uh, Primal Prime, Kali Prime, mm -hmm. and so on. But uh, at 380, this will unlock another big beast um, head of the uh, of a different house, and uh, been teased in the comic book in one little tiny panel or uh, in issue one, I want to say. Just a cool uh, ox, right? I, I was trying to claim it because, you know, in the Philippines, we've got the 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 water buffalo, Philippine water buffalo. And I was like looking like this guy. So, um, but it's a cool looking beast with big old, um, that big old horn, man, is going to be great on my shelf. I think it's going to be another very compelling character, uh, really fun for everyone's collection. And mm -hmm. what's so nice is you can work it into all these different collections. It grows great with masters. It goes great with mythic, you know? It goes great because it's AWOC. It goes with AWOC. The schnozberries taste like schnozberries. <laughs> they taste like schnozberries. Uh, it's funny that the chat's going off on its own now. Uh, Cyber Rat says he always wanted a Justin versus Jennifer as well as Nicodemus figure. Uh, Cyber Rat. Oh, that's cool. Me too. Me too. Oh, my God. That would be incredible. Brian Brink says, I wrote a book report on Mrs. Frisbee back in the fourth grade. So did I. I don't remember if it was the fourth <laughs> grade or not, but it was probably right around there brother um are we best friends? all right now now we've gotten to the the last few big boys we took a look at mamba before yep. talked to talked about mamba a little bit no sleep till mamba but now he's not the last one nope Talk we thought he was Zwar. uh zwar uh is part of those the the even like new newer buck the heavies um so the Pachydine is the house that sort of General Mamba is a part of. And so you've got rhinos and hippos, as we're about to see. 
apparently part of their culture are the tattoos. So you see that here. Definitely. That's yep. a big feature there on his belly. Um, and we haven't talked about this, but you can take off all of uh, almost all of the armor on a lot of these AWOP figures. Some some of the figures have some things molded in, but this guy, all of that all is armor set, right? So around the the calves, around the forearms, on the shoulders. And that can all come off if you wanted a, a naked, tattooed humanoid rhino. Um, so be who it. Who wouldn't? Who, do, yeah. who doesn't? Who doesn't? Right. Yeah, I and I have, I, it on, I have it on good authority that um, uh, this guy doesn't have briefs like a lot of the uh, uh, the Yeah, so, figures. so, so these will be, be new. Straight, straight. So that's a huge selling point in more ways than one. <laughs> yeah, so um, come on, folks. Unlock it. Um, and then we've got Zwar. The packet, another uh, yes. Pachydine, remember the Pachydine officer? Uh, oh, I'm sorry, Vitus, Vitus, what am I saying? The infantry, so uh, articulated mouth again, articulated jaw, so we'll be able to see what's going on. Because you got, it's a hippo. You got to see what's going on in that mouth. Yes, <laughs> those teeth. Yep. I kind of want to so, give him a gold tooth, but it's supposed to be an army builder, so I probably <laughs> I, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe the alternate, maybe there's like a, I, we'll figure it out. If you want to build army, an army builder, he says, keep his mouth about closed. the giant hippo. Yeah. I love it. That's, It'll be that's an opening true. and closing mouth, though. Yeah. You got to pair but him with Vetus. Vetus and Vitus, obviously. The two go together. Again, man, just I love the sheer variety that we're getting uh, with this line. And if you're familiar with the lore, there's no real limit on the kinds of characters that can enter the lore um, because of the mechanics of the world. So yeah, just throw uh, that out there. You, you did mention the, uh, the, the from home schooling and everything. And we, we, our state was, I think we were locked down for about three months. Yeah. And yeah. so I had a lot of time to like really figure out and build out the sandbox while we were like sculpting stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, okay, I want to set up a sandbox where I'm like, Hey, you know, what would be cool dinosaur dragonfly that would be cool so you know like it i took the time and set it up to where we can do essentially what we want uh as far as making compelling characters and fun toys and action figures so uh we again we recommend that people pick up the comic book uh we're we're leaning heavily into the fiscal media right now or the physical media i should say not fiscal um and That's whenever it. the whenever the fifth issue is out uh, we'll follow that up with the trade paperback so you can get the full story arc. And then once that's done, then we will offer, we'll start offering digital versions of issue one again. Uh, um, excuse me, all, of all the issues one through five again. And then I just double checked the Kickstarter on the Kickstarter page. I think it was mentioned before, but we are officially over 250, over 250,000 for the no Kickstarter. Yeah, check yep. It. Any of your viewers Sweet. have. Pockets of two hundred twenty thousand. Then want to throw in real quick. Thank you all so much. Yeah, well, we can actually right see. There. We can see in the back end who's like uh, got a like a save the date reminder or who's following it. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is a little, a little bit over half of the backers have backed so far. So uh, mm -hmm. you know the last couple of days again will like really will you'll see that trajectory do this type of thing which we love. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, I think we can. So right now we're less than 10,000 away from unlocking Raven. I know, right? And, and, and generally I the way these... whenever, I, I think whenever okay. we show off the painted prototype, people are going to be like, oh yeah, this is a no-brainer. So uh, hopefully we'll have it Tuesday. I'm going to ask Danny to take photos of it on Monday. Uh, it, it's... I don't understand exactly photography editing, but apparently it's, you know, it's one image, but it's, it's probably like 15 images composited. Look at that. I didn't even realize he could do that. Look at that. <laughs> Cross his arms Beautiful. Like that. Thank you. Yeah, man. I love he's to make him, uh, I, I tend to put uh, him in the Deadpool pose, you know, where he's like in front of the fireplace, kind of like laying like this. <laughs> But yes, yeah, so again, Carlo? guys, what's up, Carlo? Um, got a couple of questions here too, but Kickstarter, not Kickstarter 101, but one thing is if you're into the, this AWA Kickstarter at all, if you want to back it, 
If you've already mm -hmm. backed it and you're thinking about upping your pledge because you might be into some of the additional offerings that haven't been unlocked, remember, the Kickstarter doesn't charge you until the Kickstarter ends. So yeah. it behooves you. It doesn't hurt that if you want to see us some other stuff unlocked, back at the level that you would want to back at if everything was unlocked because that'll help things sort of get unlocked. And again, if it doesn't happen, I think it probably will because on a lot of these Kickstarters, you see a big bump in the last couple of days. So I'm expecting exactly. that here too. A uh, couple of questions. Van has a question. He hasn't told us what it is. <laughs> oh, yes, he did. This is Vince. What's good, Carlo? No. <laughs> Just kidding. Say again. What about here? Slink? Oh, oh. oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, Pablo Lopez. So, What's up, Pablo? Pablo says, what about insectoids? All right. So in the first comic book, insectoids were represented by a, a effectively a golem of insects. Um, and if you've read the original comic book, you'll notice that we've been slowly reintroducing characters from the comp from that into the new story. Um, so I do plan on doing that figure again, but I really, really like the idea of like having insectoid warriors. So, um, mm -hmm. I've got some stuff kind of clanging around in my head, uh, how we can work that in as well. Uh, the, the, the idea is too compelling not to, to jump on. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to do stuff like that. Cool. So, okay. So Van, uh, has his question now. <laughs> Van Johnson wants to know uh, what conditioner does Bill use? His hair always looks soft and full. Fair, fair <laughs> point, man. Good. I also would like to know that answer to that question. I don't actually know. Um, <laughs> uh, hold on a second. There was another one. So, okay, so here. So this is a good question here. Mm -hmm. So Slink mm -hmm. asks, how do you pledge for the elephant? Um, I think there's a couple things you can do. Number one, when he gets unlocked, he'll be available. But what you can also do is you can pledge at his level now, just mm -hmm. with the dollar amount. So you've already got that amount included in your pledge so exactly. when he gets unlocked you can just add him right guys exactly is that am i explaining that correctly yeah perfect yep. so you'll you'll either add an additional 89 dollars to your current pledge or if you haven't pledged yet you'll put 89 dollars and just select no reward this is a this will essentially make sure that you're segued right into the back and dollar um What's it called? Your your pledge. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know if you're if you're worried about staying up till midnight on the last night, just put in the eighty nine now with no reward, and then as soon as the backer kit survey goes out, you'll have access to to uh, to Mamba. Jeez Louise, holy cow! I, I kept trying to say Hannibal. It was like on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, just to add to that, um, this has been thrown out there on different streams. But uh, so after when these things end, then he mentioned the backer kit survey. Backer kit is essentially like the part of Kickstarter where people actually choose uh, what items are going to be in their rewards and then give your shipping address and all of that kind of stuff. So at the end of the Kickstarter this Wednesday, early in the morning, um, the you'll be charged for whatever you've pledged, but you also have the opportunity to in backer kit, add additional items, switch things around and say like, Oh, I, I said this, but I actually want this figure instead for the dollar amount that I pledged, etc." So chances are, and this often happens that that dollar amounts will increase as people potentially add more things in. And it has been said that um, that will affect the potential of unlocking additional things. So if we, get to the place where we're in the backer kid Wednesday's over and we're still unlocking items. Just know that that, that is in play. So, and I think it runs about 42 days after the end of the Kickstarter where people who backed can then add all those additional items. And so that's the Kickstarter prices, which we've been talking about right now, but generally right. after that, the, the backer kit will sort of be reset to essentially serve as a, a way to do direct pre-orders from Spiro but if you um, so that at that point, it'll be retail prices um, and you may, uh, what else won't be there? You won't be able to get a uh, pale pale at right. that point, because at that point, it's no longer part of the Kickstarter proper. Um, and and everything will revert to those the prices. normal retail. Yeah. yeah, everything will revert to the normal retail prices. So right now, if you look at a standard figure, it is thirty three dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, once the Kickstarter and the backer kit 
phases are over, it will revert to the standard MSRP, which is $37.99. So you can just see the savings just in that figure alone. Um, the weapon sets, I'm not sure what they're going for in the Kickstarter, but retail, they'll be $19.99. Uh, the bigger, the, the brawler figure is $49.99. And, and then uh, Mamba in the Kickstarter is $89. I don't remember exactly what it was, uh, what it's going to be for standard retail, but it will there's going to be a, a substantial savings during the Kickstarter. So we recommend, you know, avoiding the FOMO uh, and, and saving a couple of bucks while you're, uh, while the Kickstarter itself is live. Yeah. The estimated prices right now for the uh, retailer are about, are basically $5 above the Kickstarter prices, but for the bigger figures, like we keep saying estimated because, you know, these are all estimates at this point it depends on tooling and everything. So potentially those bigger figures could go, higher but on that note we do have like you were talking about the packages and the all-in versus the epic all-in um to give you a sense of sort of the savings we do have some some things that we could kind of show does that make sense to do now jonathan sure can i so, answer his question real quick yeah Andy's question uh oh, good we, question, do, yeah. we do plan on offering something similar to to ancients um They'll have more paint deco, so you can kind of expect more dry brushing. Yeah. Uh, they will be having armor included, so they won't be, you know, decked out in the armor, but they'll have stuff like armor off to the side to where you can kind of see the the, the main sculpt of the body. Uh, but we will be doing stuff like that in the future. It's just not going to be part of this Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Uh, Am I in the right spot here? Uh, why not just yeah. add Mamba during the backer kit phase? So we had mentioned earlier, uh, you know, if for some reason it, we close out at like, you know, 405 or something like that during the Kickstarter, please don't sweat it. We're going to roll over into the backer kit as soon as that launches. Uh, everyone's add-ons and, and stuff like that is going to count towards uh, mm -hmm. Mamba. So don't worry about it. You know, once we actually hit the 410 mark, when we go over to the backer kit, We'll go ahead and and, and make him an, an add-on option or a reward option. Uh, you know, so if you're an all-in, there's no need to like go and add it in backer kit. You just now get it. You just have to make sure that you select it. Well, actually, I don't think you'll have to select that. I think it's just part of it. So if you're all in, just kind of sit back and relax and have a margarita and be like, oh, cool. It, it we reached our funding in backer kit, or, or we reached it in Kickstarter, which is probably what's gonna happen. Let's be real. Yeah. So with this, I just want to let folks know there are two packages um, that are available as rewards. There's the all-in package that you referred to earlier, Jonathan, and that's sort of what's reflected on the left side of this image. And then the right side is this notion of an epic all-in, which is like I will selfish I will say selfishly that's why I like I want to be on these streams to let people know because I want to <laughs> unlock as much as possible because I truly want this to be epic. So what that means is on this side. Um, the all-in, these are the figures that were um, just originally part of the offering when you came to the Kickstarter on March 6th. Nothing was unlocked at that point. So these boxes here, these beautiful purple boxes, reflect mm -hmm. figures purple that packet. were not let on, not yet unlocked, right? And so the all-in package and what's not here are the weapons packs. So if you were to back that all-in package, you'd essentially get everything that was originally offered um, on the Kickstarter. And then on the right side, this is the Epic All-In as of right now, meaning what you're seeing here are the original figures that you see over here, plus the ones that have been unlocked thus far. Um, that goes all the way up to the Horde Assassin here, but you see them all here. Um, but that's just right now. So the idea is the Epic All-In costs a little bit more, and we'll t it's six fifty. Um, so that's like, I, I want to say, and I've said this a couple of different times on the streams. I want to like, just say that, Hey, that's a lot of money. And we recognize that. And we know there's a lot of people right now that, uh, who are struggling. So I want to throw that out there, but if you're in a position to 650 gets you everything in the original, uh, offering as well as all the weapons packs and any figures that get unlocked. So this is just it right now. Those are just going to get thrown in. If we keep going and we unlock everything it's all of this as part of that 650 package right so that's like my push is like let's try and make this epic as far as like the numbers 
that's what this is about. So um, as far as the deal and Bill, Bill inspires me every single time we talk about Legion's uh, waves and he's breaking down the prices and what you save. That's what that that's what inspired this. So thank you, Dork Lair um, and, it's awesome. and Legion's Lounge. Um, this so awesome. this is that scenario A. This is the all in package. If you just wanted to get the stuff that was originally offered, including the weapons packs at Kickstarter prices, if for some reason you're like, I don't like deals, I'm just going to buy all of them as single items on the Kickstarter. Uh -huh. That's going to cost I like you pain. I enjoy the pain. Yeah. And whatever, I'm sure Jason won't, won't uh, be upset if you want to pay extra. We'll be yeah, okay. Bill Murray from you Little do, Shop of Heart. Do, yeah. do. do it how you want. <laughs> so it would be $384, but at retail, that's $459. So even if for some reason you wanted to overpay and pay add all those single items, you're still saving $75, bucks, which is essentially two figures. Of, uh, it's actually one original figure, or sorry, one standard figure the 33 dollar figures and one of the 45 dollars roughly if you actually go for the all-in package which is 325 comparing that over retail you're saving 134 bucks which is which is kind of crazy but that's just the all-in the epic all-in which is you know which changes i gotta say this is just this is that little red asterisk is this is assuming that we unlock everything all the way through vitus okay so Admittedly, at this point, if everything's not unlocked, the epic savings aren't as epic. But if we push and people are like back in this thing in these last couple of days and we get that number up, if you were to go in with the all in package at $650 over retail, this is what it'll cost you. Again, these are still estimated prices, it could be more, but you're saving 425 bucks. And that's Spiro's way of just recognizing that crowdfunding truly is like crowdfunding. It's trying to get, identify the folks who are truly behind the idea of this brand, recognize that like AWOC's been doing some good stuff and will continue to do that, expect the same quality, articulation, character design, all of that stuff. So the idea is like, if you're gonna believe in it and invest in, in them trying to like unlock all this stuff, then you should be getting something back, right? As a, as an investor, as an, uh, as a backer. I thank you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. So that's that. If for, again, for some reason you just, if you're curious, if you wanted to buy them, not as a package and just go for everything at the uh, sort of at the Kickstarter prices as single items, you're still saving 155 bucks. So that's just to throw that out there. Hope that helps people. Um, again, if we do the Epic all ins and we get those folks, uh, the more we do that now before Wednesday, the faster we get to unlock, all the different figures. And again, we go from this kind of epic all in, which is where we're at now, to this kind of epic all in. All of this stuff for that six hundred fifty dollar price tag. So and I and and you're looking looking at the numbers and what you can reasonably expect out of the last few days from a Kickstarter, especially one that's already generated as much buzz as this one did out of the gate. Yeah. Some of this stuff is like you don't want to, you know risk hubris or whatever but like sure raving is happening right raving is happening right. Merle is so, happening so close. you know yeah. like um we we feel really good about it and we don't take anything for granted uh right but yeah we 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 feel like we've got the wind the wind at our sails wind at our back um we, we, we believe yeah and, we, and going we off we can fly <laughs> don't sing it no, I'm just kidding. He's going. Go ahead, sing it. Let him sing it. No, I'll, I'll just no, okay. say like okay, sorry, I mean, it's ahead. not. It's not. It's not blind faith either. It's it's the Brian Brink science of numbers. Um, Brian Brink, who was in the chat earlier, I think he's still here over on Geek Dad Life. He does this for a lot of crowdfunding and Kickstarters, um, Has Labs, um, Super Seven stuff, Mattel Creation stuff, and so we see this normal curve. And what you're seeing here, if you're like want to be super geeky with me for just a couple of minutes, sure. Um, the light pink and the light blue, that was the previous Kickstarter, AWOC Kickstarter. So we're comparing AWOC to AWOC. And then the dark, the red and the blue are sort of where we're at now. The red being the dollar amounts, the blue being backer numbers. So um, there is, a, you know, there is reason to believe based on patterns and the way numbers work uh, and statistics work that, you know, there's this trend that happens and that, that, was the actual for the original Kickstarter and they topped out at 360. So recognize a couple of things. This original Kickstarter was shorter, 
it was like 30 some days and uh, this one's 40 yeah. days. So there's a little bit of a period here and you can kind of see that reflected here. This was the previous final day for the Kickstarter. We've got a couple more days. This is that sort of like natural, what Brian has named the FOMO spike zone where people add at the <laughs> yeah. very end. That's we just added another thousand bucks, by the way. So it's fair enough what? to- Thank you all to, so much. Oh, awesome. Woo! Are we going to unlock thank Raven you. during this kick, during this uh, thing? Thank you, thank you. Based on these numbers, thank you so you much. You know, um, there's a potential of jumping up there. Admittedly, like this is where Brian, um, just being a numbers guy, is like based on trends, doing the math, analyzing the data. The current projection is we'll get past Mamba, but maybe not here. I I would love to see us, um, you know, break trends and go even further. But that's where we're at. So it's not total like blind faith and hope. There's 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 reason to believe that in the next the couple of days. Behind it. You yeah, can't argue with science. That's that and sword and sorcery is, thing in the science I was talking about earlier. That's one it. of the reasons why these why you know why the Kickstarters are cool and why you have that bump in the end is when you get the buzz. People, you know, right. remember the Cobra His tank? Like it, it exploded, mm -hmm. it was fun to be part of, everybody wanted to talk about it. Same thing with mm -hmm. AWOC 2 out of the gate. The way to make sure that we get these last few big figures in the end and everything in between that hasn't been unlocked yet is to help mm -hmm. be a part of that buzz. So if, if you're into mm -hmm. it, there's really, there's no downside to going, if you think you might want to do an epic all in, like if you think if everything was unlocked, I'd want all that and I'd want all those savings to back it for an epic now, back for an epic now, because again, you don't get charged to the end. <laughs> and that just helps generate the buzz and keeps, you know, the Kickstarter rolling. And then Jonathan gets his giant elephant guy and everyone wins. It, it, so. Everyone wins. I, you know, I think I'm going to make a prediction, you know, in the next couple of years, I think a lot of, a lot of people that back this Kickstarter will be like, you know, there's a cartoon about to come out and, and they'll be like, I, I was in on the ground level. Like I've been pushing this since, their, their second Kickstarter, and now we're finally getting the cartoon. Y'all are just finding out about it. I've been in love with this line, and I've got all the figures to prove it in the comics and stuff. So uh, The hipsters of yeah, the Warrior I mean, I Kingdom? Feel... <laughs> What's that? The hipsters of the Warrior Kingdom. I was yeah, there I was during the Yeah, man. I was, they're, they're, I was their cool. older stuff's <laughs> better. <laughs> man. That, Absolutely. That, you know, and well, so... That's, oh, there it is. that's the fun nerdy stuff. Let me just do some quick. Um, oh, there let's you go. do some maybe less, uh, less geeky and let's go straight. Like looking at, cool let's talk about let's let's do some non, no, you're right. Let's do some non geeky stuff. Let's talk about <laughs> looking gripping at her gripping feet. Of an <laughs> yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. And can I actually say this is <laughs> yeah. the first time this is being shown. So, um, yeah, there we go. Debut. Dan Alex is a rock star. Thank you guys. Alan Peltier is a rock star. Carter is a rock star. You yeah, know, you've you, got you, amazing uh, junior sculptors. Jeremy Wilson's fantastic. Ed's fantastic. We've got uh, J.D. Lake has helped us out. We've had a ton of amazing talent. Uh, you know, I am the art director, but obviously couldn't bring this to life without all, all this amazing talent. Uh, Brick and Adam have been absolutely essential in helping us do the, uh, you know, spread awareness for the Kickstarter and, and raise awareness about the brand. Uh, Derek's knocking it out the park with getting all these orders out yep. and, and everyone loves to see him at the booth. So we just want to, I just, again, I just want to thank our team is fantastic. Uh, my, the first Kickstarter we did or the six inch line Kickstarter, you know, I was flying by the seat of my pants. Uh, you know, Arlen and Dan were helping, but you know, uh, logistic wise, it was really just me. Uh, and so it's such a huge weight off my shoulders to have the great team that we do. Uh, and it allows me to really focus on the creative aspect, which uh, I'm sure you can imagine is a little there's pressure associated with it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the, the sophomore slump is, is a thing they wouldn't make a name for it. And uh, I think that's why we really wanted to kind of come out of the gate, just just swinging for the fences with this second uh, second series of, of six inch figures and um uh, I feel like we've really kind of started to uh, gain traction. The last the last convention we did, uh, usually there's like a little bit of slow time, 
Uh, there was very little time for us to kind of relax and, and, and catch our breath, which is what we want. It was great. Uh, you know, there was a little time to kind of shop around and get a couple of figures. But for the most part, we were jam packed the entire time. And uh, it, it's it's very uh, exciting and awesome. Yeah, I think you put together a really great team here, Jason. Like you've already been killing it right for a long Thank time. Thank you so much. Shout out to Brick, though. I'm a big fan of Brick. I do think he's a really oh, great guy you, to have as part of your team. Absolutely. Representative Absolutely. out there, a great voice, yes. man. So you've put together a yes. really great team. Brick, uh, you, uh, Adam, go ahead. I just wanted to say, because we, because uh, I know some things aren't on the Kickstarter yet. Just wanted to, people were talking some TMNT vibes. That's where I get, you know, especially with, with these two characters. But I did want to highlight these renders um, because I don't. I think we kind of glossed past, but just like we glossed cool over. Features. So we've got yeah. cool yeah, features got like two... this, man. Woo. Exactly. Yeah. So there in this in this lineup, we've got two characters that have uh, parts other than the jaw that move on the head. And this one right here, uh, Kanji's got the the ball jointed ears, so you'll have like a three hundred and sixty movement on it. I was actually playing with. The, I'm painting the alternate head now. So I was kind of like playing with all the little directions that you can move the ears. Uh, and then the second one is Gresh, who's got a 360 uh, eyeball movement in, yep. in addition to the to the jaw. So just a lot of fun little uh, toyetic type stuff that we're adding into the line as we go. Uh, we always want to kind of keep improving and adding fun and uh, engaging items to the uh, to the figures when it's appropriate. And allow me to make my pitch because I know like the audience here uh, – a lot of great talented customizers. Oh my like, God. Yes. If, if we could see some of the, I would love to see a day where people are creating alternate ears, some floppy ears, some shorter ears, some chewed up ears and other parts for this line too. That would be amazing. Alternate heads. Pierced um, ears. Yeah. Pierced ears. Um, yeah. Whatever. That's a cool like, idea. <laughs> just to throw that out I there. Do like, like, that's yeah, where the, like, the, the, the ears are tied like a certain other samurai rabbit that we love. Yes. And just to throw out there, uh, you know, you heard about the wings, the wing attachments would be kind of cool to see people play with. And then Definitely. with Mamba, we're talking about articulated ears, kind of still trying to figure out the articulation and how that's all going to work, but removable tusks. So I could see some cool things happening there. Um, just want to throw that out there. Cause I know there's a lot of talented folks in this community. So Super there cool. we go. Yep. All right, guys. So, so here it is. AWA Kickstarter, a couple of days left. Uh, and again, remember the last day it actually ends early in the morning. So right. really we're looking yeah. at next two days. Get, <sighs> get your pledges in now. Two Before the end of left. the weekend, I think would be a good way to do it. Um, so definitely uh, listen, we're, we're, we're super excited guys. Um, again, so, Let's real quick too before we uh, change topics here. Um, uh, the you guys are going to continue with uh, gathering the tribe, right? Getting the word out. Um, Absolutely, yep. Uh, so, what are the, what are the next couple of stops that people can find you um, as far as um, continuing to get the word out? So tonight we're going to be doing we're going to be we're going to be tag team and stuff. So. Uh, I will be doing uh, Dan Larson and Purple Gang tonight. Uh, tomorrow we're doing, uh, if I remember correctly, we're doing Ken, Ken Poe's show. What else yep. are we doing? Do you know Brick? Well, Brick knows because he's setting them up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we've got uh, <laughs> Toy Connections in the morning tomorrow. That's at uh, ooh, that's 9 a.m. <laughs> on. Um, I'm okay uh, with it. I should say coffee 9 a.m. Pacific. That's 9 a.m. West Coast. Yeah. Um, no problem. Uh, and then okay. let's see. No problem for me. Uh, oh, sorry. 10 a.m. <laughs> West Coast. Toy Connections. And then 6 o'clock, oh, uh, we're going to split up again. Uh, we're going to be back. Some of us will be back on Geek Dad Live to do another quick update with Toy Geeks. And then we'll be um, over on Hella Dope. Then on Monday, there will be a AI... Uh, Adventures in Collecting podcast uh, that'll be premiering that morning. And then on Tuesday and Wednesday, as of right now, we're sort of trying to figure things out, but um, there will be kind of a final wrap up over on this channel called Brick Something. 
And then maybe we'll do some level of kind of final wrap up on Wednesday and, and really help people through the backer kit thing. Maybe if we need to on, on Wednesday as well over on, yeah. on mythic legions, I'm sorry. I just said mythic legions, uh, Freudian slip. Cause I love that line. <laughs> we got mythic legions uh, on what's green. that thing? Brick something. Yeah. Something like that. So yeah. Yeah, man. I, honestly, I'm excited to talk That's about your background. Right? I'll be honest with you, Hedgehog. Like, I, I need to talk to some people about that background that you've got going on. So, wow. So for, for tonight with uh, Dan Larson, is that that's on the Secret Galaxy channel or on the Dan yes. Larson channel, Secret Galaxy? Uh, oh. It's on the Secret Galaxy channel, yeah. It, yeah. That, that's what I would so. think. But I just want to make sure. <clears throat> and then Purple Gang Gang, <laughs> Thomas says, good luck with Purple Gang Gang, 100%. I also, also wish you good luck. Uh, I'm sure it'll be an experience. Those guys, they do live streams different than anybody <laughs> else does. It's always very entertaining. That's um, how Jason, make I it think Jason will down. be perfect with the Purple Gang. gang. I'm gonna be, I think it'll be fun, man, fun chaos. If there's one thing that I enjoy, it's a good like uh, like teasing, you know? So like whenever they did their promo video, I was like, oh man, I love this. Like it was so like poking fun at me. I was just like, oh man, this is, this is totally my vibe, you know? Yeah. Poke away, guys, poke away. I thought All it was right, hilarious. So I was like coughing, laughing at it. According to Curtis, they're actually starting at 845 tonight. So yes. uh, I talked to him. Let me see. Uh, I thought he, well, they're different time zones. So I'll take his word for it. <laughs> so before we cut off here, there's a couple things I did want to hit. Uh, and I am, we are going to do a giveaway and you can't see it because I'm Ooh. using a, a background. <laughs> up. It's a super Is it seven, a super seven. Super 7 Ultimates G.I. Joe Cobra Bat. This was the blue SDCC exclusive. The blue SDCC exclusive Cobra yeah. Bat. New in box, no shipper, brand new. That is going to be the giveaway. And in honor of in honor of some of our comments earlier today, the hashtag is going to be the blue. So hashtag the blue. If you want to win a Super 7 Ultimates uh, Cobra Bat, blue Cobra Bat, uh, I ship, I'll ship it to anywhere in the lower 48. Anything else beyond that, we'll have to have a conversation about it. But, uh, you know, uh, all the giveaways have been lower 48 so far anyway. So here, let me let me put up a quick banner here. Give away Super Seven Blue Bat. Hashtag Blue. There we go. Oh wait, no, sorry. Wrong one. This one. Oh, there wow. we go. Super Seven Blue Bat. Hashtag the Blue. If you want to take part in that giveaway, which we will do right at the end of the stream, which will probably be right around 8 30 um but yeah guys a lot of great information there uh a walk kickstarter volume two Let's see what's going on in the chat do it now back it get your goodies <laughs> listen jordan look at my stream right now it's purple all <laughs> over the place you can't that's what i was it. laughing at <laughs> um i was reading it but yeah, so before we before uh, we sign off, I would be remiss if we didn't get to one or two more things. And the first thing is Four Horsemen Studios, they're teasing us again, bro. Teasing <laughs> us again. <laughs> Listen, we've already got a blue one. <laughs> Who knows what could happen? So Four Horsemen are again teasing us, messing with us. And this is how they're doing it. So, oh man, good. Just about a, a week ago or so, whatever it was, week and a half, less than a week or whatever, uh, Jeremy posted a tease of something that was upcoming from Four Horsemen Studios that involved a bunch of different blocks of color. And immediately there was all kinds of theorizing going on as to mm -hmm. what it could be. That tease was then updated with a bunch of faction symbols. <clears throat> and the theorizing continued 
Oh, man. Uh, and then I think it was just either yesterday or today. I think it was today. Yeah. A further update was put out, a shipping update. Now, Four Horsemen oh, wow. often put out shipping updates based on all the waves that are coming up. And the tease from earlier in the week is now a part of the shipping updates. Oh, the mysteries that's smart. Mythos. That's so cool. Yeah. And the key thing here is that it's shipping April 2024. Uh, and Jeremy, in, in his post, he said the Mysteries of Mythos will be revealed Monday. So this Monday at 4 o'clock-ish on the Four Horsemen YouTube channel. So they're going to reveal exactly what it is on Monday. And the key thing here is whatever it is, is in stock and will be shipping this month. It's April 13th <laughs> oh, wow. now, so the month is half over. So that's really shaken up a lot of the predictions that we've seen. Bill's been on top of these predictions the whole time. So a couple of days ago, Bill had amalgamated some of the key predictions, posted them in the Dork Layer collectors group on Facebook. Uh, anybody that's watching this right now, if you're a collector and you're cool, you got to be cool. <laughs> uh, and you're not in the Dork Layer collectors group, check it out on Facebook, Dork Layer collectors group. So I think Bill we're said, approaching 500. Getting nice. Close. Here, let's get let's get the AWOC Kickstarter past 260 and let's get the Dork Layer Collectors Group past 500 tonight. There it is. There you go. So Bill, it's you had deal. you had put together some of these uh some of these theories. Some of them mm -hmm. have obviously been uh affected by the latest news yes. earlier today. Oh, for sure. Now, uh, initially, you know, a lot of people thought right away, is this a new all stars all stars vote? But then the T's had a hashtag, not all stars. So some people thought, OK, well, maybe that's a double swerve and it's not all stars necessarily, but it's still some kind of figures you can vote on either a version two or maybe these are figures that were up for all star all star votes previously, but didn't make it. And that's why they're not all stars. The in stock uh, component of it makes me think that's really unlikely right now. Mm -hmm. Right. Patrick yeah, Boyle had had a really cool. Now. Yeah, I think that's out of the question. Patrick Boyle had a really cool theory that's probably also out right now where he had sort of was talking about the different mysteries and Mythic Legion's lore uh, and maybe that this was a, a lead to that somehow. Um, but Bill, do you just want to talk about some of the theories that you think sort of uh, make sense? Some that still make sense, and I alluded to some of it on this one, <clears throat> is like, there's two there's two big ones i think one of them is the the, the idea of it's a mystery box pat is talking about that here like mm -hmm. maybe it's you know so you have that grid and maybe there's 36 figures that it could be in the box that you order maybe they found 36 cases of three, 36 different figures and there's 12 of each or whatever and so it might be a mystery box thing right like so my whole point about this comment here was that like if it's going to ship by the end of April, like if it's going to start and finish shipping in April, which it kind of sounds like by the language of it, maybe not, but mm -hmm. then it's not going to be like a, it's not going to be something where there's like a dozen things to choose from and creating this infinite number of different boxes that they have to pack. It's probably something where there's like one thing one item maybe maybe it's a new pin set or something like that like there's one item and they just put it it's it's all pre-box it's all pre-box and ready to go and they just got to slap labels on all of them and just send them out to whoever ordered them that's kind of like my thinking about like if it's this close it's gonna ship mm -hmm. this soon and they're they're saying it's shipping in april i feel like they mm -hmm. would say like the the way that things have been going they would say we will start shipping in April, <laughs> you know, like the, the way like things have been going where people are really getting frustrated and contacting them about like the delayed shipping and stuff. You wouldn't think that they would say shipping in April. They might like hedge their bets a little and say we will start shipping in April or something like that. Um, yeah, it definitely makes it seem like that there's not it, it can't be a shipment like you're saying that's too complicated so that there's too many different combinations you could make to me it right. means like probably one, one thing yeah one yeah. set whatever it's, it is maybe one like a thing. figure of zero i 
That would make be. sense, except for all of the different faction symbols. Like, how does yeah. that all play right. into it's one? Really, yeah, you're right. Something. Yeah. yeah, but it could be along the lines of a figure obscure type drop, right? Like, um, but like, yeah, what? Why? Why are there specific numbers of different factions? There's yeah. like five of this, two of that, one of this. Like, mm -hmm. there's got to be some reason for that, and that's why I think the mystery box theory could be right you know, god i, I think love the, the mystery heads box pack, idea heads pack theory could be right if it's like oh a big huge set of 36 heads for like 36 different figures that have all that have been like hey, helmeted that's... so far and they're mm -hmm. like the mystery that's is like cool who's idea. under the helmet right and it's like revealing that like that yeah. could be it um i feel like it probably wouldn't be a pin set based on the mystery element of it but yeah, yeah the pin so set the big ones yeah the pin set feels a little sort of off the table a little bit because of the the faction breakdown and there being sort Unless of only it's one pins mm. you know how they have the and cultist mm -hmm, pin mm -hmm. it's a bunch of different character pins maybe who knows okay no now, at the beginning of this, Kevin Boots had posted like a side by side of like the tease, and then Jeremy had posted uh, a photo of him at the studio, and they were playing like a tabletop game from a couple of months ago or or something like that. So then the theory was put out there: could it be a mythic tabletop game, maybe with miniatures? And initially, that made sense to me because I'm like, all right, that could be one set, right? That could be one set. That's an awesome and idea. Except for one thing, and Kevin Boots points that out here is that Jeremy commented, and I believe this is accurate, this is inaccurate, my bad, that uh, no one had guessed what the right answer was. And I think people had guessed that tabletop was, and miniatures right away. Ago. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's true. But the thing is, Boots had posted that tabletop guess right away. Yeah. Um, so, so I don't know. It's, that makes me think that the tabletop and miniature thing is not what it is. Um, but that would make sense, and I think a lot of people would be would be down. I for would that. love it if it was the tabletop stuff because it would pair so well with the video game. Mm -hmm. I mean, I Maybe actually it's... prefer it over the video game to tell you the truth. Remember memory? Remember the game memory? That. And you flip the you cards. flip cards. Maybe it's just that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's Mythic Legion's memory. <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> you had mentioned like trading Still... cards before. That would make sense. Can I ask about the the head idea that just sort of came up in conversation? Was that predicted before the uh, statement that nobody had guessed yet? I think I people know. predicted heads packs probably okay. early okay. on. Yeah, okay. but doesn't mean he saw that prediction, mm -hmm. or it could be somebody predicted some type of head pack, and it's some other type of head. You know, like. If somebody didn't hit the nail on the head, they can say nobody predicted it, right? So sure. I, would, I wouldn't really take that comment as like super commitment. Specific. And yeah. yeah. To like eliminate anything yet. Yeah. So Pablo asks, so this will not be something that everyone will have a chance to get. Maybe it'll be a limited amount. I kind of feel like that. Will, I mean, there'll be some limited amount because it's in stock. But I don't think they would do a tease like this for something that's super limited. That wouldn't make sense right. to me. Like think um, again back to figure obscura, those things are are technically limited. They they mm -hmm. don't ever really sell out like day of right. Like those yeah. they make a ton of those. So if if this is something along that line, like there there might be plenty for mm -hmm, mm -hmm. especially if it's like mystery boxes. They could they could make they can make tons of those. You know, and if they run out, they can make more. Right. Joe says Mystery of Mythos is a great name for an RPG. He's not wrong. There you go. Mark R says, like a I hope minis. clue game. I hope I'm hoping it's minis. I think it'd be awesome. That would be cool for sure. Rob Zamora. Guys, I have to hop off. Track. I'm gonna head out. Thank, Thank you. Thank y'all so much for having me. This has been Appreciate amazing. It, Thank y'all so much for all the support. I we, I can't wait to hop on again, maybe do like a little victory lap after after a little uh, after the dust has settled. We'd love that, man. We'd love that, man. Thanks for coming on. Awesome. Good luck, oh, man. Already a successful campaign. Let's get it all the way. Let's get all the big boys into this thing, too. 100%. Let's Thank you, it. man. Thank you. Y'all have a great night. Take it easy. Later. See you, Jason. Good night. I'm going to hang out. Know.
and my my mythic itch is gonna i want to hang gonna, out for a little bit if that's I, cool. I think we should spend extra amount of time guessing and spending a lot of mental energy on this just to annoy people who don't like it when <laughs> there's a mystery like, what to guess at all right so per per courtesies let me unveil my board over here i've done this yeah. whole thing with string no, I'm just <laughs> it's like that episode of of three body problem where she pulls the the board yes. across and yeah oh i haven't watched uh, it yet bro, i did i did show. read the first book though oh, oh there's even better. books i didn't even, i didn't even know there's a book yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, even it's, better, it's Jonathan. You're in a good place. Yeah, I did, but I've only read the first book. I've only read the first book. It's different. So, yeah. I either way, it's always exciting when they tease things fun. like this. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love that they're doing that, and I love that the the extra tease today that it's going to be shipping just sort of like throws in a whole other. It changes the changes the whole scenario because yeah. I was buying into some of the and well I mean I think initially is my hope was that it was something figure related because that's mm -hmm. what I would be most excited about, but yeah. some people have said well maybe it's a reinforcements and I'm like I don't think so right on the heels no, of so essentially true, yeah. a reinforcements wave, no. um, and again even like a reinforcements wave there's a billion different combinations of orders unless you do yeah. like an all in thing like they did in the fall. And again, they don't do it. I don't think they would do a tease like this for something like that. This is something different <laughs> and I'm not sure what it is. And um, it's fun to guess. Uh, Rhino, do you have any hopes oh. or guesses? I don't. Uh, honestly, it, after you said like the uh, miniatures, I was like, that would be the most logical. And I'm I'm in for the RPG game because I wasn't like Jason. I wasn't too excited about the uh, the Video tactics game. game. Yeah. So or trading cards. I'd be in for either one of those. So somebody had uh, before I forget to mention this, I think it was John Caulfield mm -hmm. who said that now he thinks it could be wave one of a year long sort of six wave drop thing where like on Monday mm. they're going to drop a wave. Maybe, maybe you can only go all in. That's it. You just can go all in, but it's a, it's, it's a wave of six figures and they correspond to the row of the top six factions. And then, mm. um, next month like maybe it's each month until you get to legions con or something like that so six months in a row once a month you get six new figures it, it's it's a lot like 36 figures is a lot and that sounds crazy to me but i mean but that, yeah that's why when people were saying that like is it a 36 figure wave oh my wallet and i'm like I don't see them doing anything like that anymore yeah. because they just, they don't, they don't want to, they want, they want to give you some throughout the year that you can like hop in on, but something like that seems more possible. And Oh my God, I would love that. <laughs> I would so without even was, knowing what they are. I'd be, I'd I'm be like, I, I fear that as somebody who like does <laughs> reviews and stuff like that <laughs> feels intimidating to me. What was Six the price of the original? Kickstarter wasn't it like a thousand and some change for an all in? I have no I idea. I don't know. I didn't back it. I wasn't even in. That was pre Hedgehog uh, days. <laughs> pre Hedgehog. Uh, the mystery's we... name is what intrigues me. Maybe it is just sort of setting up this mystery for all of us to guess. It might be a, a meta mystery, but if it's something about like actual the mysteries of mythos, I'm I'm super hyped for that that notion of just like you know getting us a little bit maybe more into the lore or maybe as you you got me on this head thing like peeling back some mysteries and giving us some answers. All of that is super exciting to me. The idea of heads seems like I don't know it that would take a lot of planning and time. Assuming these are like you know tooling new heads and everything, so it feels a little unlikely but some of you customizers cool. don't spend enough time reading and it really shows <laughs> it shows <laughs> <laughs> curtis are you doing the customizer studio tomorrow sunday i assume i assume yes if so <laughs> what time is that again i've i've not joined yet but i might so usually for anybody one o'clock one o'clock for anybody that doesn't know usually. curtis uh hosts i guess for lack of a better term 
a group customizing session where people that are tater. Yeah. Um, he's like the John Stockton of customizing. Um, people that are like just doing working on their own projects, whatever it is, sort of get together online. And while they're working on it, you know, trade ideas back and forth, ask questions. But do you need, do you need to, there needs to be a, um, a, you need to ask for an invite or something like that, Ryan. Is that how it works? Yes. Uh, he, since the group has reached the maximum every week, he has to set up a new group and he asks people if they're definitely going to join. And then he adds you to that group so you can be in the call. Cool. Yeah, there you go. Just PM Curtis. Okay. Yeah, it's a really freaking awesome idea. Um, and I think I might be able to join tomorrow. I've wanted to for a while, but I'll reach out. Tomorrow. With this. Yeah, here, let me solo you. Let me, let me embiggen you. Look at that. Check it out. Sir Jonifier of Clinton. My own tribute head. The I wings. am immortal. Such a great job on those wings. And I want to see the bird that that came from. That, those beautiful purple wings. I am immortal. There we go. Yeah. So, uh, so the theorizing will continue. Again, we don't have to wait long to find out. They're doing yep. it. And they're doing a special show for it. I wonder if that plays into starting the shipping next week because like they literally they could you know the four horsemen o'clock show is wednesdays at four you know who knows maybe there's a conflict reason or something like that but instead they're doing a special non-wednesday edition of four-ish horsemen o'clock on monday to reveal what it is that's kind of awesome oh check it out so another sdl exclusive curtis says there is an announcement coming soon about a customizing studio event at legions con 20. 24 only makes sense right nice. there's the uh the pop and swap session which is already a massive success at legions con and now a separate uh customizing session wasn't there a paint session last year too there with two. david there williams like a beginner and jeremy and advanced yep yeah um oh now we're digging into it brian brink says is doing it on tax day significant <laughs> uh in some ways i don't know specifically related to the uh to the announcement or not that'd be funny though um but yeah so i think we'll it will i think it will be like the typical like they're gonna announce it early in the week and then it'll be it'll, it'll go up for pre-order it'll go up for purchase like fr they'll, they'll say the date they'll be like okay it's gonna go up mm -hmm. wednesday or it'll, mm -hmm. it's gonna go up friday at 1 p.m whatever the thing is they're gonna announce it they're not gonna just drop it i think I just thought it was interesting that they're doing like they could easily just wait and tell us on Wednesday, right. but instead they're doing a special show for it. Now there might we be should a... get Curtis on here to try to figure out what we, sh we should really spend some time trying to figure right. out why it's and picking Monday. his brain to and yeah. see what he thinks, you know, yeah, we should theorize about that. Maybe he can moderate that he could out amalgamate the theories, you know, <laughs> and we could talk about them. Um, and real quick, I did want to mention, we didn't get a chance. We didn't end up going on last weekend. Again, my issue. But this time it was because of WrestleMania weekend. I was in Philly most of the weekend. Um, but I didn't get a chance to talk about these um, from two weeks ago or a week and a half ago, whenever it was announced. The first Legions Con exclusive set was announced. And they are tributes to Chris Garich and George Gaspar. Um, Bill, I know you had a chance to talk about these. I am actually super pumped uh, about these figures. I think this set looks incredible. Mm -hmm. I love the Earth absolutely on these, yeah. and obviously an amazing photo by Trevor here. Um, As always, it just makes mm -hmm. them look incredible. Here's the full loadout: a packed, massive loadout, a number of different machinations here, reminiscent of the Furious Four set yeah. where you can make a bunch of different figures from this set yeah. um and i just want to make sure i get the names right so this is gaspar the unamused and garich mm. the unpredictable um one thing that was really cool because i did watch the stream you're kidding curtis available for a stream we gotta hop on that is, wait so is curtis <laughs> saying he's available to come on and spend time speculating about why they're going on Monday. <laughs> Cause if that's the case, then we should do it right now. <laughs> so people like that one. huh? 
Man, I'm I'm super excited for this. When I saw that Gaspar, that sort of like that. What I've been loving about Legions lately is that we're definitely like exploring other sort of like cultural references from the real world, from our world, and working that into the line ever since like with uh, Sun Wukong, right? For me, big deal to kind of lean into um, Asian mythology, Chinese mythology, or and fiction and literature specifically. And now getting this warrior monk stuff in that sort of style that kind of reminds me of like some Hindu vibes, like. I'm all about it. So that gas bar is definitely one that got me super excited. Love the soft goods. We know they're going to be good because uh, yeah, see Jessam working on that. And I love the the parts use. Just that's the beauty of this line that is so unique to it. I'm clearly like a Lego person, so the the pop and swap and the customizing and mixing parts around is so right up my alley. And I, th these figures are fantastic. And the incredible soft goods uh, continues here. Yeah. And then the 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 monk the uh, that's the George tribute. Mm -hmm. um, and on Source Horseman, they say that a dour monk who dislikes amusements, <laughs> Gaspar the unamused, and they talk about the loadout he comes with. But that's one thing I just did want to mention just for a moment because that was one thing that kind of struck me during the stream. So the orc, that's the George tribute, and of course the George thing is, hey Allison. The George thing is that he hates fun, right? He's good. They, they got the T-shirts. George hates fun and everything. But to me, like um, during the stream when this was announced, he just his reaction seemed so like genuinely like touched by it. He like kept looking at, you know, looking around, being like, "Are you serious? Is this serious?" And then Jeremy asked him, "Like, did you really not? Did, did you didn't know, right? Did anybody tell you?" Um, and I don't know. I thought that was really cool. George's reaction to it, to like really like be touched by it was cool. And, mm -hmm. you know, George is not a guy that I know. I don't know George oh, very God. well. Right. But <laughs> I know. I know. I did it. Um, <laughs> but like, it's just cool to see him get like a tribute like this. I remember it was funny. I think it was Toy Con in December. George was there with the horseman. And I happened to be like, look, I went over and said hi. And I was at a different table looking at like some four inch figures. And all of a sudden, the guy's right next to me, like saying like, oh, you know, this is cool. Like I wanted, was looking for this and blah, blah, blah. And I turned on and it's George. And he just came over and started talking to me about but these four inch figures. And I'm like, whoa, and I'm like, it's the guy that hates fun. But um, <laughs> I don't know. To me, it was cool. That little moment of him seeing him getting his tribute. Um, but now to uh, interrupt all that good feeling. Curtis is hey, in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was pretty busy, um, but I made a few phone calls, cleared my schedule um, so I could help you guys out. So. so, Curtis, how do you think that this, the announcement of the Legion's Con tributes, how does that play into the mysteries of Mythos and the mm -hmm. announcement on Monday, you think? Uh, much like most of everybody else's guesses, uh, absolutely not at all. Um, <laughs> no, nothing to do with it. No chance to guess it. There's there's not a single person in the community that's going to guess whatever that is they're doing because it's going to be something brand new and it's just a waste of time. So that there you go. Unless your name is Jesse Arnold so, because he always guesses correctly. This is Figure interesting. Obscura, that's I'd like to break bit, this you know, down a little yeah. bit. Yeah. So if Curtis thinks it's wrong and fruitless and unproductive to guess at the teaser that the four horsemen carefully created and made so that people could guess and predict and so are you saying that you think that the four horsemen are wrong in creating this mystery for no uh, to the, guess at? the four horsemen are great business people um they they threw this little nugget out there uh, to get all the ch cats chasing the little string around the room, and and every one of you guys jumped at it, and you're so you're saying they're predatory. That sounds you're describing a predatory they, tactic. They know <laughs> their audience. You're they describing a predatory consumer. Uh, <laughs> they're like, we just got to throw this little nugget out there, and then people yeah. are just going to go crazy. Okay, so so yeah. okay. Got yeah. it. Curtis thinks four horsemen are predatory marketing. They're um, smart. Scammers. I don't know what I don't know those Got big it. words you're using. Um, there's too many syllables in there. Um, Curtis thinks four horsemen are scan artists. Is that hard to understand? <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first. Bit, folks. A little bit better, but that, I don't think that's what I said. Um, well, that's what you yeah. said. Brilliant business people, for sure. Yeah. 
things. So yeah, you're more so questioning the this. intelligence of the community. Is that what it is? Is that uh, what just the just just the time wasting? <laughs> Uh, oh. and, and like people repeating the same guesses and, you know, 5 million posts, Like here, here's my thing. I love the cabal. I love the community. I love going to the cabal and seeing, you know, people's create creations. They're, uh, telling their stories about how they got into the, into the line, all this kind of stuff. Um, bring it, bring it. but when this kind of stuff happens, it is 50 million of the exact same post saying the exact same stuff that is completely wrong that is just filling up the entire community. Um, That's how I feel about so, yeah. customizers. They just keep throwing <laughs> the same sculpts out there with just slightly different paint work and just like barely differently, like creatively things. And it's just like over and over again. I just feel the same way. Yeah. I, I mean, I, you, I don't I know you. what it's like to be in the shoes of non-creative type, but I mean, if, if I was to try to put myself in that spot, that's probably where I would feel as well. So I, I can, I get where you're coming from. Oh, interesting. It, it, amazing that uh, Curtis the antagonist like one of the greatest things about the four horsemen fan community is the theorizing so much so that the company plays into it with regular with all of the figure obscure releases with mm -hmm. with uh, mm -hmm. this and people are having so much fun Curtis is trying to take over the hating fun role in this community <laughs> he's coming no. for, he wants a George myself. tribute that looks great, working dude. On, working on the goblin. I'm That's trying beautiful. to work on like on layering and sh and um, not just one solid color type painting. Beauty. <laughs> in, in all in all seriousness, I yeah, it, it, I don't care. I don't give a shit. I'm just fucking <laughs> around. <laughs> I don't care. I I'm not going to waste my time because I know I'm not smart enough to figure out what they're doing. So you know, but people have fun with it. Dude, like figure obscure. I, I and think I, someone's and I got told it. Jeremy this, and I've told I've told Bill this too. Figure obscure is my absolute favorite. Like from the moment that they I say there's going to be a drop till like it actually happens and Bill does his review and stuff. Like that period is the most electrifying. Like two days it is in the in the you know in the, the community. So and it's a quick it's a quick turnaround too. Yeah, yeah. Right. Same thing here. It's like all these predictions, right or wrong, we're going to know it and. Base, probably yeah, if they drug this out for like a month, it would be like, okay, come on, you know, yeah, yeah. but we'll know tomorrow. So, so is, is any truth to the rumor that you're a big Madam Web fan, Curtis? I haven't seen it. Um, so I, I can't, I can't comment one way or another. I've, I've not heard good things, but no. unsubstantiated then. Unsubstantiated. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Curtis, is it true? Are you starting off? Are you Curtis, the producer tonight? I am uh, I am Code Lavender. Yep, I got I gotta get ready. Fifteen <laughs> minutes, I gotta be backstage. So, all right, Code Lavender. all right. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna run the giveaway in just a moment, guys. Um, again, it's for this incredible Super Seven Ultimates GI Joe uh, Blue Bat. Actually, Bill, you did a did you do a review of this back when it came out? No, or maybe I, you just I did about have it. it. Yeah, but I didn't do a review. No. Okay. Um, but new in box GI Joe super seven ultimates blue bat. Um, and as a tribute to some of the, our comments earlier, naming different figures, the blue, that's the hashtag. So this is your last chance. Hashtag the blue. Let me pull this, uh, pull this down, pull that down, pull you guys over here and we're going to run it. So here we go. Here's another giveaway. That will be promptly sent out sometime next week ish to the winner, guaranteed. Uh, last chance, hashtag the blue in three, two, one. Good luck, go. All right. Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? Who we got? I saw, Sh I saw Shmerbo twice. Kevin Great McCoy guys. wins. Congrats. Congratulations. Surprise. Congrats. Congrats. Oh, this one is yours. <laughs> I'm actually absolutely stunned and shocked. <laughs> so I wonder, and you see a name more than once. I could have sworn that I've seen a name in there and then that name won later. Does that mean, I don't think that means you're entered more than once. I think it's just cycling through the names. Yeah, I don't cycling. know that for sure though. Yeah, no, it just goes through them. I, I have a theory that like whenever I see a name a bunch of times, I think it's going to be the one because it's just, I don't know. Yeah. Hmm. 
And then there's also that theory that the later you put your name in, the more likely you are to win. Oh, yeah, but yeah, I don't we, think we, there's we any kept... data behind that. No. It, I, but I've Curtis, can you speculate attention. on that for us? I, I would not <laughs> choose to, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, uh, uh, Kevin, thank you for being here and watching the stream. Congrats on winning. Just shoot me a message, um, or Tanya can, whoever can, and um, I'll get this out to you next week for sure. So there we go, guys. There he is. Where did he, oh, that, yes. What's up, Kev? Can, can we just, as as a community, like with all these different shows going on, uh, just take all the giveaways and send half to the Orkins and half to the McCoys and skip all the wheels? Can we just? <laughs> I think Tanya's. I don't know about Kevin, but Tanya's won here, uh, twice. I think maybe. Twice. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, I think tw I think twice. I I'm but, pretty um, sure the Orkins have won on my show. And they've both won on this show for sure. <laughs> uh oh, look at me misspelling YouTube. Well done in the banner. YouTube. <laughs> so guys, uh again, thank you to everybody. Thank first of all, thank all of you guys for coming on. Brick, thank you for coming on. You've been a workhorse the last couple of weeks for this Kickstarter. You should be very proud because I think it had a big effect and I think it will continue. And we appreciate you, you hanging out with us. Absolutely. Bill, thank you for stopping by, my man. I appreciate you Thanks coming in and hanging out. Not a problem. And Curtis, thank you for always being willing to just not give a crap sunshine. and just having fun, man. Thank yeah, you for positivity. stopping by. Yeah, positivity, and, sunshine, rainbows, all that good stuff. And it, in about 15 minutes on the Purple Gang Gang channel, uh, Code Lavender in effect, Curtis will be producing with Van and Jordan. Uh, Jason from AWOC will be back on to talk with those guys. Good luck, Jason. Um, <laughs> it should be fun. I'll be hopping in there to see what's going on. Thank you again to everybody who stopped in at any time tonight. Uh, we had a great time. And anybody that watches us on the replay on demand, thank you so much again, too. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit the notification bell so you know when stuff like this happens because you're almost guaranteed to see Curtis at some point uh, because the door is always open and he's always welcome and the door is always open for all of you as well. Rhino, any last words? Thanks for hanging out, everybody. Yep. And uh, I guess that's it, guys. Don't forget the number one rule. Be cool.